Wild Lab Show with K Pook, the mayor. What is the DJ if he can't rap? What is the MC if he's like that? What is the DJ if he can't scratch? Well, we could do it all, baby, just like that. Yo, we back on the Loud Lab Show again. You know how it goes down. We got a funky, funky, funky fresh show for you. You know that. You know why the show is funky? Because we got a very special, special surprise for you guys. The one and only Ralph M is in the spout tonight, and he's going to show us how to get down. He's going to talk about everything from back in the 80s to 2000. 20 damn near where we are, but it's 18, no, it's 17, right? Well, we almost at 18, it don't matter. We having a lot of fun. We're in a loud lab show. You know who it is. We got DJ Lou, man, who's always on the ones and twos, who holds down the show, who gives you your theme music to listen to. And then we got Todd One, who's my right hand man, who left takes care. Left hand, left hand. Left hand tonight. Right hand. I'm left hand. But you're my right hand man. And of course we got Mr. P, Scotty P. The last time I messed up, but his name is Scotty P. That's Scotty P. He's Scotty P, the producer. And always we got the lovely one on the chairs over there holding down the guests down. And we're going to start the show tonight, but we got some scrumptious, scrumptious breads of flatness coming to your belly, too. So when you want to know something that's going on, get a hold of my man AJ the chef because he's going to tell you something, too. So let's get the show started because we have to get it started. And it's the Loud Lab Show. What's what? going on? <laughs> you know what I like about when I see you every time we do this show? What? That you just like a flick my big lighter. It is all of a sudden the show starts and you're like, what's I'm going showtime. on? Showtime. Showtime. You know? Do you know that? Primetime. Primetime. But you know, Showtime was phrased by Mr. Jerry Buss and he locked it down. Yeah? It's Showtime. Yeah. Showtime Lakers, right? Showtime That's Lakers. what he called, right? That's what he called. He said, I wanted to bring basketball, something new. I wanted to bring Showtime to Los Angeles. Wait, what the fuck is Lou mixing in up over there? What are you mixing over there? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. No, I no. Just, I don't know. Lou I, I, was just, I was just wondering what he was concocting over there. <laughs> so what's going on? Well, you know, um, let me tell you what, what's been going through my little mind, like always. I little. Have to, little mind. Little. You look in the mirror lately? <laughs> Just because my head is big, like, um, what's That's the right, baseball player? got a bunch player, of big you know, heads sitting here. What's, what's the, <laughs> like the baseball player from the San Francisco Giants, Barry Bonds, he had a big-ass head. He had know. a small one when he started. Yeah, he sure did. But – I've been uh, yeah, a small one too when he ended. I, I, I went bowling <laughs> the other night. You went bowling? Yeah, I went bowling at Where? Ca- Cow Bowl. And um, you meant back to Del Rio? Sent you back in the in the hood? I went in there one time. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like. I want to do some cosmic bowling, some midnight bowling. Yeah. See what's going on? I really like bowling. Bowling's a you great. You like bowling? Bowling is a great sport. It is. That's how my parents met. My parents met at a bowling alley. Ron and, and Joyce? Really? Yeah. Bowling was big in the 70s. Um, bowling and drive-ins. <laughs> bowling and drive-ins. Uh, you, you went, I thought you went to Dodger game. That was last night. Last so. night was the Dodger game that yeah. I went to, thanks to Taco Nazo Omar. Again. Again. He just blessed me again. So pretty much now I can start saying for all your taco burrito and, and, and needs and Dodger ticket needs, <laughs> yes. call Omar. Call Omar. Omar takes care of it. And uh, when I went, I went bowling with uh, – Paul, Paul Gomez, Toad. Oh yeah, that's you. What do you do? You talk to him about being on the show? Yes, and he just laughed at me. <laughs> <laughs> really? I mean, because you know he does have a good story because he does own the trucking company. Now. Well, he's got lots of good stories, oh. but it's you know, but it's like old home week too. It's like yeah. catching up and sh- catching like that, up. Yeah, you know? we'll, we'll get we'll get to- we'll get Toad up in the spot one time and see what's going on. No kidding. Okay, yeah, he so, he was fun, you know. And, yeah, and so you went uh, you went bowling. How? So you say you you like bowling? Are you a good bowler? 
I used to be, but now I just take the 17 pound ball, throw it way up like this high, and I just throw it. <laughs> no, like overhand? Well, not really like that. But by the time the I mean, ball, did you, did you break 100? But time, yes, I did. You broke 100? About 175. Oh, that's not bad. No, but by the time the ball gets down the gets down the lane, yeah. And now they got a speedometer up there. It's That's going at least cool. twenty seven. Where's where this Cowboy? Where do you guys? Where do you go? Cowboy's in uh, Long Beach, like Lakewood. Long, uh, it's not Long Beach. Oh, is that not, not hey, close hey, to your hey, place? Hey, Pook, it's called yeah. Long Beach. Long <laughs> Beach. Long Beach. Long Beach. Long Beach. Strong Beach. We I gotta to call go. It. To, I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> right. We call it that. The, you know, Strong Beach back in the day. Yeah. Strong Beach. So it's out there. You know, it's open till midnight Monday through Thursday. Then. Two o'clock on Fridays and Saturdays. They go late on that. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, you know, Toad beat the shit out of me though. Toad's a good bowler. Is what you're and saying? And he started off the game with four strikes. Oh snap! Right. Saying, "Oh, I haven't did this in a long time." Yeah. So we yeah. used to go bowling every now and then with the real thing crew, and you know, for birthdays and whatnot, and fucking work outings and shit like that. But I don't know, bowling seems like a lot of work to me. I'd rather just sit there and drink. But that's the best part about it. That's why it's a great sport. No, I know that, but I, when it's my turn, I'd rather just go, nah, I'll just sit here and have my drink. Okay. One of the things I hate about bowling, it's the most disgusting thing, is how people bowl and eat. Right? With their fingers. Right? And, yeah. Cause it, you it, sit yeah, there, you're all, bowling, no, and then you're going to go food. and grab right. it. You and just put your finger. And all kinds of shit. Yeah. Dude, you're grabbing pizza, putting it in your mouth, yeah. putting your fingers in balls that everybody's Everybody touched. Yeah, yeah. And then right. you're going <laughs> and grab it. But it's only. It's only no, you're right, Scott. And the dude, shoes. I, the fucking uh, balls uh, are disgusting. It's all uh, around uh, disgusting. Dude. Now, unless but you that's how my parents met. Unless you have your own ball, your own ball and ball shoes, then it's not as bad. Digging their fingers through balls. Digging their fingers through balls. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Strike! Strike! <laughs> yeah, Woo. that's fucking great. That's great. And tomorrow I'm doing. I'm going fishing in the morning. You're going out again in the, the day again. boat. Yeah, I take the charter boat six in the morning. Come back. At Who are you noon. going with that? Who I'm do you, going who, with my coworker. Yeah, but tell him where where the coworkers from. The, the coworkers, coworkers from dad. somewhere in the Midwest, and he's bringing his dad with him. Where his there's no never, oceans. Dad's never seen the ocean fishing. He's never so been on the ocean fish. No. So. Speaking of a box of drama, me for that fool, right? <laughs> so it's gonna be a good adventure for. Uh, but he, he has one of those tough son of a bitch dads. Yeah, yeah. I'm a tough son of a bitch. All right. So well, yeah. Wait till he gets gonna, down the Pacific we're Ocean. Out, we're gonna find out how tough he is. Gonna be like this. Yeah. <laughs> Blowing chum all over the fucking side all day. Sharks are coming tomorrow. And yeah. uh, let's see what else have I gotten myself into this week. Uh, not much, you know. My mom was here, and then she she left, and that was pretty good. And you know, right now, did you I, take her? You know, did you take her to a work event? No, I did not. You, you know, not I was going to tell, you, you, know, gonna tell oh. you, I forgot to bring it up during the show, but your mom's was our first female guest we've had. Yeah. Like I knew it was our first mom, but I didn't even put, the, I didn't, I didn't think I was first the female. Mom and first female guest. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, that, that, was, that, that, awesome. was our, that was our first female guest was your mom. I didn't, so. I didn't, I didn't realize that. Oh, well, no, I, forgot that to, I forgot to, you know, mention that during the show, which, I mean, your mom, I mean, your fucking mom's awesome, man. <laughs> she, uh, she really, you know, like I said, she's, she's there to. She supported you all the way through this thing, and you know, like I said, she's 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 right about the one thing. It's like you can't, you want, you know, you get, you gotta, you can't just leave people fucked off like that when they, when you whether there's friends and family and they go in and they get locked up like that. It's like because you know you could use you, you obviously got to see what it happens and how people turn into who they are when they don't have a support system inside, right, you know. Right. And and like you said, like it gets it gets it's it's hurt it's hurtful it's miserable you know it's it's a it's a very lonely existence you know. I mean, sure you got all the, the knuckleheads you locked up with and all that shit. Yeah, but, they're half our guests. Yeah, but but what I'm <laughs> well, I mean, but but, you, see, but but I'm doing a community service so they can see that. No, Look, no, you def- definitely you know, are. You wouldn't bring somebody in here if they didn't deserve to come. No, in if here. they didn't really deserve to be in here, that's why they're here. And then I'm trying to, you know, in the long run, when I go down and I go see the judge again, like on December first, I'm going down. My lawyer yeah, we're and I put on your 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 year out. Well, my year out's coming uh, next week, next two weeks, two weeks. But my official year, which is December first, yeah. You gotta that's, go back to talk that's to the when judge. I'm going to, to court. Do you have to go see Hang'em Hang High Lou, or you have to go no, to some regular No, we're seeing a different court, different, okay. different judge, and Andre Townsend, which we're going to get in here soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, maybe we should have him in before the, the, the Yeah, yeah we should have him before Well, should we? Yeah, yeah, we should. Okay. Yeah. Should, Andre Townsend, because... I'm just saying, because if it's afterwards, it has no effect on you. If it's before, could what he says have an effect on you? No, 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 not all at right, all. all. Not right. at all. Because what we're going to try to do... We're just going to talk to him about what he does and, and how he helps yeah. young men and get, you know, and, and or, or whoever's client base may be. That's what we're going to talk to him about and, and how he helped Pook and shit. And so we're then, not going to sit here and conspire about <laughs> fucking, cr- like, future crimes and shit. No, I just... But no, no, it's not going to... Listen, 
we're going to go in there. We're going to sit down. We're going to we're, what we're going to do is we have a plan, and we're going to tell the judge because you know they put me on five years probation, so got, I can't do nothing. Right. I can't tweet the hippie sick. You know, I can't do nothing crazy. Yeah. And this all this stuff is happening, and I got to wait five years. But the whole trick is, I got out three years earlier than I'm supposed to. Three. Three. Years earlier. Speaking of getting out. Yeah. OJ. OJ. OJ's out. OJ. OJ's out. OJ. Um, I got out three years earlier, and now I've done one year that's been real, and I've the clean state slate, right? Oh yeah, I didn't count this. Okay, I, uh, yeah, but I didn't count this year. So. Right. So then we're we're gonna go because usually if you do half the time, you can say, hey, you know what, this guy's been good. Why don't we take him off probation? But my judge and I, we're gonna say, my my lawyer and I, Andre. we're gonna go in there and say, look, this is what he's been doing. Are you going to try and get in, you get off now? We're going to try to get off on the first year. Oh, man. That's... We're going to bat. We're going to go for but, it. But, I mean, why? I mean, you got nothing you to got lose. this far. You yeah. got nothing you got to lose. this far. Yeah, Because he can just say, yeah, you know what? You have been good. So, I just saw my I think PO. your job helps. My job is not, not You don't have just a job. Like, you I have, have a, city a city job. job. When yeah. I told that to my PO, he was like, you're working for the city? How did yeah. that happen? <laughs> You only been out eleven months, and you're yeah, already yeah, in yeah. the city. So all that stuff, and with his help, it's and the PO's help is gonna work. When I say, "Hey, let this guy go," so I can take my ass to Greece. Oh, <laughs> you just want to get where you want to go? They just had a big ass earthquake. Man, they're fucking falling apart over there. That means there's some broke, so some broke hearted women out there that are real desperate. <laughs> You're, you're scandalous. For some California yes, loving. Yes. Hey, you know what? I'm not even going to lie. You know, I told my mother before I was going to I said, Mom, you know what? I said, I'm going to have a kid from every nationality and just tell them, <laughs> <laughs> just tell them, your brother's in this country. Just find them. Your, brother, your brother's in this country. Go find him. Just your find brother's him. in this country. Go he, find he, him. He looks like that guy. Just find him. Just find him. Like that movie. Smile. And I just told my mom, she just started cracking. She goes, what the hell? Go for it. I just, no, you know, no, no, no. But, you know, I, I want to go to Greece. Yeah? Yeah, because I can Why? never go. To, what, I can what, never... what was the what's the reason on Greece? What got I, you for that? I like that black curly hair that the women have over there. All right, that's all right. <laughs> There's a joke there somewhere. And There's then, a joke uh, there then, somewhere. Then, then, you know, I want you know. Then the, the water's nice. Sure. Well, yeah. How that's much? What they say. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Greece. It is. <laughs> Greece. It is. And then oh, then Brazil. And then, you know, but I can go to Brazil right now, you know. It's no problem. Why? How can you go there and not Greece? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I just want to go to Brazil, too. I want to go everywhere. I can't go to Japan. Less curly hair Japan, in Brazil. Japan, I can't go. And that's where I really want to lay my... What? Well, they have a rule about taking oh, they convicts? Not, they won't let they take, will take not, one. They will not take any drug offenders, American drug offenders. Wow. So that's you... why Snoop Dogg hasn't been able to go there or Paris Hilton. Ah, they're banned from so, Japan. And banned from Japan. So that's like a that's a fucking straight up like even if it's you got, you know, conviction or no conviction. If you if you were if you are if you were caught up in a drug, par- you know whatever the fucking thing is, they they will ban you. Yeah, trafficking. The Japan is strict. He can't go to Canada. Well, I can't go to Canada no, either. I can't go to Canada. I, I can't even go to Canada. I can't even go right up there either. Hey. Okay, whatever the hell they, they said, do not come back. So I'm I'm screwed from Canada and I'm screwed from Japan and I'm screwed from, um, I think China. Yeah, I'm good China. So I mean those, you know, whatever. Right. I feel like with the way that everybody looks at America right now, you can't there, go nowhere. There, there's so much we could do, we could see here in America that we don't like. You think Greece is beautiful? Just go to Hawaii. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, no, Hawaii is beautiful. Well, the rest of the world doesn't like us right now. Yeah. Oh, so, you know what? I can't so go to... So it's I like, I, I want to do my... Tra- if I'm going to do some traveling, it's going to you know be what? here. I can't go to England either. No Great Britain. So it's I'm, I'm screwed. You're not. You stay here in America where <laughs> we fine. love you. <laughs> stay here in America where You're America fine. loves you. The only big like band I'm ever going to see was the old record store, and it's gone. <laughs> Middle Earth is gone. <laughs> Middle Earth's still there. Middle, Middle Earth is gone. No, no, it's they they shrank it. It's still in the strip mall. No, but it's gone, gone. It's no, it's, I think it's no, gone, gone, gone. No, 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 they shrank it. It's 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 just it's smaller. It was there. It was where? there smaller. What, what do you mean where? Where the fuck? It's not middle? at the same spot no more. In the strip mall, there off of Lakewood. No, yeah, next to Sizzler. <laughs> next not, to the Sizzler. It's not there anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's not. They there. moved. They moved it over there by um, ABC Donuts, and it's gone from there now. It's completely gone. Oh, no well, more. Lou Man, Lou Man, <laughs> you live in Downey. Yeah. It's Middle Earth. Uh, Middle Earth Records gone, Middle gone. Earth, yeah, it was gone, gone. But because they, they shrank it, and moved it down a little bit down in that strip mall for a minute, right? Yeah, it was a smaller spot. A smaller spot, yeah, and then, then he's saying it moved over to somewhere else. Totally. Paramount Boulevard down, um, 
Paramount and by the by the 99 cent store. It was it was a good. It was, yeah, it was right over there for a minute. Then it disappeared. Yeah, it's gone. But it's gone, gone now. But that was a spot back in the day. Oh, then. Hey, I could you tell never you. fucking been, been in it. Oh, how, you then missed why, out. How the fuck are we asking him? I, I just th I thought I know, record. I know, I know, I know. You know records. I know. Record. Right, right, right. No. I could tell you what record I bought from there that I was so happy. When I walked in there, I bought Cookie Puss. Cookie Puss? From Middle Earth. Right? Yes. All right. I and, remember my first three. I remember my first three, first three CDs. I bought Happy Mondays. From Middle Earth? From Middle Earth. Happy Mondays, uh, The Cult, The Love Album, and... Uh, I think Nine Inch Nails. I think Nine Inch Nails was my, those three, those three, my first CDs purchases out. Oh, no, no, no. Material Issue. Material, oh, wow. Material Issue. Wow. Their first album. Hey, what time did they come in that big box? Oh, yeah. They were fucking the big square. Yeah, the big, it's like a, a plastic container that came you in. You know, uh, Lou Man, uh, Todd got a lot of his uh, uh, music influence from our buddy Sam. Sam and you would have a great conversation. Oh. Yeah, we're going to have Sam in here someday soon. Yeah, yeah. T t tell Sam, the man Sam, about Sam, Sam's CD Sam's collection. 80, Sam's got a fucking, he's an 80s, like, uh, just, like, phenom about music. And, you know, that's when he grew up in his era. He's a teenager. And, but he's got, he's got two giant, like, bookshelves just still full of just useless CDs. CDs. Just, <laughs> just, I, mean, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, I mean, he's, got, he's got the digital, he's got the, also the digital computer and iTunes and all that shit, but he won't. Even though he's got all of his his, his shit in, in the computer, he won't get rid of any of the CDs, and they're just they're just stacking and dust collecting and just fucking they're gross. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know. He's tried to digitize them so many times, and his computer just crashes, and then it'll get a new one, and just he. It like, is. It, oh man. Yeah, yeah. We'll have him in here. We can chop it up and talk 80s all day. And what about yourself? What have you been going? What's been going on with you? Um. Yeah, yeah Todd. What's well, been going on with you? <laughs> um, I haven't spoken to you or talked to you since we didn't golf. Yeah. So. Usually, usually you sit. Usually, <laughs> usually when when Todd and I work at night, so we'll golf in the morning. And when I say, "Hey, you want to golf?" He'll say, "No." And when he says nothing, I fell asleep. And when he says nothing, I assume we're golfing. I so fell I fell asleep. I got I got the beers ready. I got everything ready. I'm sitting there going, "Dude, where's Todd?" And then there was a fire. There was a straight fire where where we were golfing. Really. I sent you the picture. It wasn't a picture of the sky. That was a picture of a fire. It looked like it was over near, uh, like, Lakewood. I would say Lakewood-ish. You just sent me a fucking picture of the hole in the fucking chain link fence. How do I fuck do I know what that is? <laughs> <laughs> see the smoke? See the smoke? Oh, do you see the smoke? Or does that just look like fucking clouds to a chain link fence to you? <laughs> that's, that's a smoke fire. That's a smoky fire. That's a smoky fire that's right a smoke, That's a smoky fire. Is that a fire? That looks like a fire. That's a fire. I was looking for your golf ball. That's where you hit your golf ball last time. <laughs> Seriously, that's, <laughs> that he, is that, where I hit my golf ball last, last time. Last time he, he, he fucking the second shot landed in that fucking yard right there. So I thought that's what you were doing again was like <laughs> no, trying to send me no. the golf. I didn't notice the fire. No, I was showing you but there was yeah, a fire. But yeah, no, I didn't golf because I was tired that fucking morning. And I won, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, I won. How'd you play? Um, I think I, I think I ended up uh, with like an 11 or 12, and I found a par. Uh, good for you. I like pars. Good for you. I did hit a uh, an almost 300 yard shot on uh, hole 11 there. That second hole, well, hole 11, but for us in the morning, that second hole, almost 300, so close. All right, so that's back yeah, to so you. That's, I, I didn't I didn't go golfing, and I've been sleeping a lot. And uh, how's the, the the house coming along? How's it coming along? Okay, yeah. Like uh, Robbie and I got the backyard and the deck moved and stained and. We, like I said, we're doing a lot of uh, backyard landscaping, so uh, we're kind of we're done with our little section that we were going to be working on. And uh, you know what, though, you know what's interesting? On uh, Monday night, I was out and I um, ran into some friends that knew some other friends, and I was introduced to this this gentleman, this guy. He's a young kid, good looking. He's a bisexual guy. Okay, bisexual. And you said he was good looking too. Yeah, yeah, no, he's a good looking kid. But so, but I was I was fascinated by. Because he, he, you know, he's a friend of the people that By I was. The out. fact that he was good looking and he likes guys and girls. No, no, just shut the fuck up and listen. <laughs> so I was just gonna, I was because I wanted to talk to Pook about this. It's like about guys and girls. Yeah. Do you know any uh, bisexual people? Yes, or, I know a lot. Yeah. Well, I won't say a lot, but I know enough. Okay, a few, right? Well, I don't. I this actually is. I don't really. I don't. I mean, I have a lot of gay friends. I have a lot of lesbian friends. I, you know, and you know that community. But so this kid that I was talking to, we got to remember that a good percentage of the guys in prison were. 
spices. Sure, right, right, right. Okay, right. You gotta, you gotta make it, you know, <laughs> turn for the worm, right? Turn for the worm. So the the I was just I was just thought it was fascinating, but you know, because I mean, I'll be the first to say. I mean, there's nothing better than fucking, you know, than fucking. Okay, right. But I was just I was like, so I was sitting there, we were having some drinks, and we were all talking, and he was he'd only been kind of like out and doing this like for like a year and a half now, and he's only had two uh, two encounters. Mm-hmm. But I was like, so we were sitting there, and, I, and he was like nervous about like, you know, like, I don't know if I'm going down the right path and what. I'm like, you know what, you're fine, you know. If you know, I go, that's you know, you still got to kind of you know watch your back, and it, it seems like watch your back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I didn't mean it so much in that aspect, but there's a lot of like, you know, there's a lot of devious like, there's a lot of lying, you know, you're lying to people about who you are and what you want and and, and to get to it to achieve and. To be, to be who you, with who you, who you want to be with, and then he said mainly it's mainly. Are you it's coming main, out right now? It's mainly women. It's women you got to lie to. It's the dudes that don't mind. You know, it's like you got to you know because the guy the chicks like oh you're bisexual like ah, wrong you know it's not who I want to be with you know so you got, it's like I said it's like it's a very like it's it's a like a weird community you know it's you gotta it's it's a like, so anyway but basically I was like I basically I ended up telling him I was like you know what's crazy I'm like you when you go out at night. I go, you know, there's nothing better than Sky's going. the out. limit. No, no, but I go, there's nothing better than when you go out, you know, and you're like, you want to hook up, you want to, you know, but when you'll take it from either fucking team, I mean, you're fucking batting 100 every, I mean. Every you, time? Every time. It's like, so he was, you know, he was, he was laughing. He thought that was kind of funny, but I was just, I was just fascinated that the kid that I was talking with, he was just like, you know, it's kind of something new, but just really, it's, it's just like open, like it's, 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 a, it's, it's really open to, to be with both genders, Did you know. Did he hit on you? No, 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 no. It wasn't like that at all. It was just, you know, we were just friends of a friend, you know. And so I was, gotcha. I was fascinated with him and his life. And he was, he was telling me, like I said, he's only been kind of dipping in that side of the pond for about a year and a half. And I was just like, wow. I mean, that's it's a very, it's a crazy lifestyle, you know. I got a question for you, Pook. Um, as usually as it goes with, with with gays, there is no such thing as bisexual when you're a guy. You're just gay. Is that how you look at it, or is there? both and back and forth or you know what I'm saying like, you know what I mean like a girl can be bi guys can't you're just gay but obviously but no, but the way, but if, the, the no, way but no, no, no but this you, you can be guy you can like both you can obviously That's like both what, but the way that guys he was hitting on a, it, actually he was hitting on a girl that look night at that look on his face he's, he's like hmm, <laughs> hmm, I don't know where to go with this but no but do you see <laughs> what I'm saying in, in your opinion is there can a guy be bi both? yes no See, that's why I knew you, that cause answer. Because if, if you're gonna, if you're gonna trail to, to decide if you're gonna be top or bottom, then you've already made the wrong mistake. You've already not the wrong necessarily. Way. Like, what about a girl though? How come a girl can be bi? Because girls seem to, I think girls can be bi because us as men think it's a fantasy. So we kind of we kind of like what they do. We 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 enjoy that they do that because if you ask a woman what type of porn she watches. She, they don't usually watch two men. They think that's disgusting. So. <laughs> All right, dog. Okay, keep, dog. Keep, keep it down. down in the fucking gallery out there. <laughs> but, but you know, they'll watch two women with no problem because they just they go through those phases. And I guess I don't know, man. You Look, know, I don't want to get a bunch of fucking hateful comments. I was just no, saying. And, and you're not going to. No, I understand. Look, but no, because it is a tough thing. Like a lot of times, guys can't. Be by. I don't. Listen, so, that's, so, that's so, what I'm saying. It's like, but, so but you I can found, be. You, I, no, you either, you can either, you and the dude was hitting on this this really pretty girl. But see, I feel I feel bad night. for the girl. But because that's, he's playing, so that's what I'm saying. He's playing. He's playing. He's playing Superman and Wonder Woman at the same time. That's what, that's what I told. That's what I said. That's that's what our heart of our conversation. Two was great to. superheroes. I said. By I go. You got. I go. You have to fucking. I go. There's a lot of like. You can't divulge everything right out of the gate to both people. And I go. So who do you find it harder to be honest with? And he goes. It's women. You know. You, I got it. You got to. Yeah, of course. You got to lie to the women, and t- or until you can figure out that she's it, she's all in. With is he tendering? What I don't. know. And if he does, is is it both or I is it? I don't know. I didn't get that that part. I just you know we just like I said we talked for a little bit and. He let me ramble off a few of my fucking, you know. You're rambling. My my questions, of my course. my crazy questions, and. Do you want to bring them in here? No, I don't. I just <laughs> not after, not no. I mean no. I just like I said. I just, you asked me what I've been fucking doing, and I, I, I fucking understand. told you. Okay, I want to ask. All right, Shit. let's get to our fucking guest. Okay, so listen, man. Today, I brought a guest in, and I've been wanting to bring him in for a while. He's a great DJ. I grew up listening to him for a very long time. Yeah. He's. 
he's touched his hands. Anyone we know of right now, he's passed through them, and he knows them. He's done something with them. He's a, and he's just remarkable in the wheels of steel. Yep. And now I think he's an actor too. He's doing a little. He's dabbling a little in the acting. Dabbling in the active, in the, in the active pond. Yeah, in the active pond because that's what you do. Right. After DJing. Yeah, you keep moving. Are entertaining. You got to spread yourself out there a little more because you got to keep yourself relevant. Mm-hmm. So, for those of you who don't know who he is, you will know now. His name is Mr. Ralph M. Mr. Ralph M. Can you please uh, come on over to the? Welcome, sir. Welcome. Come on down and come get grilled a little bit. Oh, man. Yo, thank you all for having me, man. Todd, What's up, bro? Scott. Oh, man. Uh, what's your name again? <laughs> 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 Welcome home, man. Damn, bro. Hey, man. I'm, I'm so glad to be to here. You, man. When's the last time you've seen him, bro? Well, we saw, we saw each other at an um, art exhibit a few months back, about five months ago. Oh, no, okay, but, but you uh, know. But, but prior to that, oh, it's been, been the 10, the full the 10, yeah, yeah. Right. right. The Since full. Like, oh, was it, oh, no, it had been a minute. 2000. Man. But, but yeah. that's, my, that's my, I can recall seeing you was like 05. 05, there it is. I left in 06, but I, but I saw you in 05. 05. And, and then everything's happened since then, you yeah, know, um, and who... You've been through a lot of adventures in 10 years. So. Absolutely, man. It's been so nuts, man, from, from, from 06 to now. I yeah. I can't believe that shit, man. But let's, so, ba- let's yes, back sir. that up before yes, 06. Yes, yes, yes. When, when did it all start? I was just talk, talking to my man, AJ. AJ Washington, man. I can't believe he's cooking the knife for me, man. That's my brother right there, yes, man. Yes, yes. Thank you. That's like a special surprise right there. Loud Lab Show. We go AJ. all out here. Special. AJ. Hold on. Before I get into all that, I had to say... Me and AJ go back 33 years. Damn. Going back to John Burroughs. I met him in 1984 coming out of Wilshire Crest. So he was the cat that, you know, he he knows a lot of my friends that I grew up with and and whatnot. So when we met up at JB, it was like Puma suits. It was like we just ID'd each other. Everybody knew, like, (laughs) B-boy, B, you know, and everybody knew. So we come together, we dance, listen to music. Run DMC was was big. As Tila Rock was was starting to bubble. Uh, Uncle Jam's Army was playing a lot of that music. That's 83, 84. I go back to like 19. Sam's era. Uncle Jam's you, Army. You know that's that yes, that's the dude that we had. Um, Je- uh, Skid Row General Jeff. Yes, sir. That's that's my man. Do you know, do you, big, do you know General? Big ups to General Jeff. Yeah, Rodney you, O and Joe Cooley. He's yeah, the yeah, one yeah. that says, say yeah. Yeah, yeah. Boy. So, yeah, so you know General that's that he comes down now and then only works at the Skid Row. He's yeah, like, he's oh, that he, dude. He, man. he sat right there. Yeah, Skid actually, he LA. sat there. He was yeah, one of yeah, he was no, our yeah, guest. He, he was sitting he, right there. He came on our General Jeff, man. And he's also one of Bobby Jimmy's critters. With he was down with Arabian Night. You go back to Bobby Jimmy, who was a was a air personality on K Day. He used to have record deals. He was like a Weird Al Yankovic, yeah. if you yeah. will, yeah. For, for early day. And it was independent. Yeah, he clowned. He did the roaches, talking about rumors. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. I remember he roaches. That I totally remember then, roaches. Big <laughs> butt. Big butt. And then he had the New York rapper Rally where he was spoofing roaches. all the rappers. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's the funniest shit ever. New York rap. And where's York, that? Where, yeah. where are they at now? I mean, where, 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 is all oh. that, where is all that sitting? You know what? Nowadays. And, and many DJs record crates, that's for sure. And right now he's he's yeah, still doing Cola radio, if I'm not mistaken. He's on um, he's doing Russ Parr. Si- simulcast as yes. Russ Parr around the, the country. It's real, man. Yeah, last time I had seen him was like he was on BET, and then he he was doing hosting something. It was a comic thing that they would do, uh, and then they had um, him doing. He said he was an air personality in Texas or something like that. Yeah. So big up to Russ Parr, old school dude, man. Definitely a radio personality that had records check him out man bobby jimmy and the critters you'll go back and you'll find the original guy like arabian night see everything was broken up we all were kind of like just bits we were just all these little pieces of one big puzzle puzzle but at the same time we hadn't come together yet so it was like i was still growing over on the miracle mile in, in los angeles i grew up literally like between la brea i grew up on highland avenue so my block was was I was like one of the only Hispanics on my block. I, right. I grew up right at the tail end of Miracle Mile. So I was like right before I hit the San Vicente side. So I'd be like literally Olympic, and on that block on that street, shit, I moved over there. Uh, you know, my folks, 1976, and from that point on, there was so many people that came in and out of my life that I saw. My neighbors were like my neighbor was the actual producer for Motown Records, and his name he, his name was Leonard Caston, mm-hmm. and he he worked rocked with Eddie Kendrick. 
Hendrix to keep on trucking. So and then so and I was mostly grew up in an African American neighborhood, yeah, and, and Jewish neighborhood. Yep. I grew up around Italian Jews, Russian Jews, Polish Jews, Mexican Sephardic Jews, <laughs> all kind of all kind of Jews, right? Jews are these are all my cats, right? <laughs> right, but, right. But you know, and then being Mexicano, you know, Aztec, you know what I mean? That's the bloodline right there. Um, you know, it, I, it was it was incredible, man. Right. I learned from everybody. So, yeah, when did you? So, how did like what Pook was asking? When did it yes. all start for you? When did you start? When did you kind of get your your your? When your, it was DJing, your calling. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would say right after. Well, from 1980 to 80, 82. Right in 1982, because I was listening to the radio heavy in 1980. They used, to be this, they used to be this radio station. Let me tell you, it was from Tijuana, Mexico, in L.A. It was called the Mighty Six Ninety. Yes. The Mighty Six Ninety. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, the Mighty Six Ninety was the Mighty Six Ninety was the shit back then. Tijuana, I mean. Mexico. You know, that was like we didn't know. <laughs> wait, wait, that. that shit came out of Mexico. Yeah, it did. did you no know kidding. That, That's crazy, man. Yeah, I, a, you gotta remember the difference between AM and FM is AM travels. Oh, yeah, the broad, all yeah, the, the way, and. Right. And you were, that's why we were able to hear that station so good. A funny story is, I just, yeah. I've talked to people in Hawaii wow. that used to not hear <laughs> that station, but they used to hear K Day because K Day used to bounce off the waves, that's the crazy. AM waves. And it carried all the way there? All the way to, they could barely hear it, right. but they were able to, like, oh, dial it in. Kitties. It's so frequencies, static. right? Just yep. traveling. Frequencies. We'd, we'd hear that out in Fresno, but you'd get a little, a couple of, a couple of seconds. You'd be like, Oh, that was such and such. Or what is that song? And then cats would go off of that. They'd be like, yo, we heard a little piece of this one song. It said this, or Bataram, right. or it said, or whatever. And it was like, <laughs> they'd just go off of that. Right. Cats had names for songs. I'd go out to uh, Fresno and stuff like that because hip, hip hop was big on the West Coast, right? 1983, 84. Right when it really infected me, it was right at 82, between that 82, 83, like when the Do Wah Diddy, the Zap, all that stuff that came, uh, you know, Roger, rest in peace. Um, the stuff George Clinton, Atomic Dog, right when Prince was dropping that, when 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 the time, had, yeah, and... controversy, let's work, like all that stuff started coming to me. That's when the soul really started coming to me because before that, I was listening to a little bit of everything, and that's what the Mighty Six Ninety exposed me to. Right. It exposed me to gr new wave groups and and to uh, you know rock and pop type radio type, you know, Pac-Man yeah, yeah, yeah. Fever and yeah, shit yeah. like that. We, we I was still fever. growing, man. <laughs> right. So the, and those were like new to us. So the, the Pac-Man was the hottest thing in 1980, 81. Right. So I was a radio head. Right. Right. And, and that's really what the turntable, you know, of course, my parents, they would have records. They would listen to Koreans, Clearwater, James Brown. My mother had a very eclectic record collection, and she was cool. I'd just love to play her records, and I'd have my little Mickey Mouse turntable and stuff. Sure, sure. So I was rocking that. They kept me entertained, and I didn't bother anybody. They'd be like, Ralph, you used to sit there, and you would just look at the record, man. Like, you would literally look at the grooves and just be, like, <laughs> trying to get up on the big console and shit with your arms over there. You weren't even right. tall enough to get over the console. You know, eight tracks and yep. a little bit of everything, man. So my, my parents were. Where they were young when I was, you know, as they had me, they were in their twenties and their thirties. So when I was like eight, nine, they were still, still partying. They yeah. Still party, man. I love my mom and pops, <laughs> man. They still party, man. They're in the seventies, bro. So, but anyhow, going back to that, the radio, but the turntable got me to really being curious about the sounds that were and how it's coming to yeah, you and getting out. Yeah, right. So the airwaves, stuff, right? That exactly. voice, man. John Fogerty, dude. As a kid, right. I knew. I was like, who's that dude right there? That guy's mm -hmm. got a voice, man. And his just it was infectious, dude. It just captivated me. James Brown, all that, a little bit of everybody. But although I'll say this, you know, that, that was early, early seven, like mid seventies. Then I just kind of like that just went away, and then other stuff started coming. In 1980, when the digital age kicked in, which was with Devo, which was all these new wave groups, samplers, machines, and stuff yeah. like that. Synthesizers. Yeah, synthesizers. Synthesizers. Crazy. Synthesizers were kicking in. I'm still doing the research on that. Depeche yeah. Mode. Because I go back to that, and I'm just like, yo. There's a record that I heard that synthesizer, and then I go back and I'll find the synthesizer, and I'll be like, "Damn, that's the fucking sound." Yeah, yeah. So the rate, the turntable to the radio, and then to to back to the turntable to now with two scratching right. and mixing with that whole thing, and then going into you know wanting to get the samplers and stuff. So right. I did go through each one of those stages, and all the whole time I was still I didn't even know about break beats. Like I didn't know about that stuff, man, until later. I didn't even we didn't even know that, man. Like night even. Early on, like 1985 and stuff like that. Now I'll hear stuff like Art of Noise or I'll hear 
other things. I'm like, oh, that was cool that um, Yes sampled that Funk Incorporated stab. That, uh, uh, yeah. doom, doom. Like, they sampled. Like, you look, go back and listen to Owner of a Lonely Heart. Yeah, that's one of the that's early the fucking jam, right? sampled. Yeah, Funk Incorporated. Yeah, they, that's them, huh? Crazy. You hear that where, where you hear that uh, drum roll turn around. Yeah. And they killed it. They, right. They that really jam's a fucking shit, shit man. That, yeah, that, that's a big sonic. That whole song. And yes, yes was a big... I mean, full sounding band, you know, but then when they started got in, you know, you know, sampling and using all the other stuff, made them sound even bigger. Super, man. And when I heard that later, and I was like, oh my God, these dudes were sampling shit and they were doing that early on like that already. I didn't even know any of this stuff, man. Then break beats and then everything else. And I was like, whoa, all this stuff. We were scratching the fast records. Once I got to that point, because it was all about dance music on the West Coast. Yes. Yeah. And what year? Um, well, from 83, once we started getting on the mission of eight, it was, I was a fifth grader in 82. But I had cousins. I had two cousins that, that were literally DJs. So from, from 1980, 81, I'm Radiohead, just, you know, handling that. Then, then, uh, then I go into like, oh, shit, what's sc- scratching? Malcolm McLaren? Well, that yeah. and, I and, mean, in, what, about 83, 84, uh-huh. I, uh, I, what was I, fourth grade, third grade, fourth mm-hmm. grade? Mm-hmm. And this is, this is as mainstream as it's going to get. But at that point, Rocket. Rocket. Rocket yes, came sir. out, and that kind of just changed oh, man. everything Absolutely. for the most part. Because then, then the Fat Boys, yeah. and then the B, or not oh, BC, yes. the, the Fat Boys uh, run DMC. But, I mean, it was Herbie Hancock was the first one where you kind of heard the, well, oh, yeah. for mainstream. I mean, y- other people, yeah, you know, took what is a DJ if you can't scratch right. that one? You know? That was our underground joints. Yeah, like, those yeah. were stuff you'd hear on K-Day, and then you'd hear, like, the, the cats that knew about it, they'd go buy the record, or you'd hear it at the party for the most part. Like, the songs like... Herbie Hancock, Rocket, that shit was all across when the board. All, all oh, that, across. Oh, that, that was Grammy yeah. award winning shit right there. Yeah. And I was the dopest. And they deserved it, man. Well earned, man. Grammy uh, uh, DST, uh, uh. DXT. Do you, do you have that, Lou, man? Can we hear some Rocket? Oh, man. I don't, uh, <laughs> all right. I, I usually, don't have I, I'll it rock on, it, too. I, I usually will bring it. I grab you know, my when, that, when that song came out, even yes. B Boys, everybody was like, yo, this is it. This is, our, this is a song that was made for us. Right. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, man. There's a composer. Oh, so, man. Well, there's, super, there's no man. words, right? <laughs> was there no, any words about it? Rocket. We would that was wait. It, right? Yeah, that was it. We would wait for the end of the video program, like Night Tracks or Night Flight or VH1. No, no or one was no VH1. Any of those? Then. Right. That like, was the uh, only ones. At that like time, the only ones was Night um, Tracks. It was Videopolis. Yeah. Was one. No, not Videopolis. Um, with, was that one uh, Richard that, Blade. Right. Richard Blade had a, had Correct. a video show back yes. then. Blade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And back then. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's still Rodney on the Rock. For and real. then he, um, just, he just finished his. He just retired. Did he? Just retired. Yeah, he retired. I think like a month ago. Okay, because he'd yeah. been doing a lot of '80s parties and stuff down in like West Covina. And, and then and, that, uh, that, over that there. they had that video show. D, D, and D, West Covina down there D on uh, Africa, Costa Mesa. What was like D's name? D from the one that supposedly Dre beat up. Way back then. Oh, D Barnes. She had her. She had her video show. Yeah, oh, pump it up. Pump it up. Yeah, absolutely. It was a couple of those video shows used to come on. They back sprouted then. up. Yeah, once once uh. And then MTV came. There was and- a nothing going on for a long time, right? between like the '84 to like '87, like like you were saying, right when when Fox started bringing on Pump It Up with mm-hmm. D. Uh, you know, that was still '88 going into '89, bro. And then, you know, it was like there was well, MTV. What in MTV that. cracked was- in '83. Right. Yeah. Or yeah, 80, yeah, yeah. 82. Not, like 80, 81. They yeah. wouldn't play, you know, the Michael Jackson issue started at 82. You know, they had to force MTV to play at Michael Jackson. Yeah. They were like, if you don't play it, that was the best thing it, that, that ever happened to Billie Jean. That, yeah. that was the best thing that ever happened to MTV would Absolutely. start playing Michael Jackson. Because then after Michael Jackson, they started playing Lionel Richie. <laughs> it just exploded, <laughs> man. <laughs> Word up. Oh, man, that lies, lies, lies. Was that, that was the, yeah, man. I loved all those type of records, man, because I could still hear the, the production value of what they were doing. See, when I was growing up, we listened to what the adults listened to. Yeah. And then so now, 33 years, 45 years later, if you will, it's like, hold up. Why are the adults trying to do what the kids are doing? Like, we're, we're doing the opposite now. You know what I'm saying? And you see this shit now, and I'm like, hold up, dude. Like, come on, man. We don't, we, why are we doing this? Yeah, what yeah, the right? fuck are we doing? Like, we, we, adults don't even want to be adults right now. They're like, fuck out. Where did you get your first back. gig yes, at? Sir. Your first uh, d- no. d- d- was a DJ. You, I you, say in 1980. When I, now, well, actually, about a paying gig? Yeah, or, paying yes, gig. Sir, yeah, yeah. My like first paying. paid gig that I did. Now, I had to practice because once I set out to DJ and to really become a good DJ, scratching, blending, putting that practice time in, you had to be good, man. Yeah. If you went out 
Motherfuckers would get you off the turntables, man. Once the camaraderie really kicked in with DJs, I'm kind of fast forwarding a little bit, but I'm taking it back. Is that by like DJs, you could call, you could call like if you had a good reputation with all these other DJs, backyard DJs, house party DJs, etc. There used to be a whole movement where cats would come out with the Nissan mini trucks. This is '85, '86, and cats would come out to party. You'd invite a DJ, you'd invite 20 DJs to come to your party, and you would, you had the entertainment for the night. Yeah, they'd come spend. It was either five. Shit, you just need one. Right. One DJ and you're right. in, you got an entertainment you for had the night. Yeah, they were good DJs. So these dudes, all of these DJs that were coming out, they were from Cruz. They were like from East, East Los Angeles, from here there. You had the dope, the dope hip-hop, electronic funk DJs was like Uncle Jam's Army, on, you know, and, and from, coming from L.A., Egyptian Lover, Bobcat, dopest dudes. Those are the dudes that went on to help LL Cool J write songs. And you know what I'm saying? The LA Posse. A lot of people don't even know that the, that second album, or really it was that first album was the LA Posse thing. Did we get that? We, yes, did. we did. I, I saw it. There we go. Yeah, LA, yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is. Five is power. So we got to go for that win now, man. But yeah, so going back to that, basically on the on the west side in, in, in Los Angeles, you had Uncle Jam's Army, you had Jam City, which was another collective of DJs that were dope. You had the homie Vicious Lee, because we all went, I knew Vicious Lee since I was in the second grade, bro. DJ Vicious Lee, man, we had... What do you mean you knew, like... Oh, excuse me, I still, uh, we still know each other, but I, we, like, we were... Like, you, you were friends? I know him from the schoolyard. Oh, 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 uh, okay, Crest. so before he was that guy. Correct, he was, before any of us he were. He was just your friend. We were, like, playing with Trans Ams and shit. Oh, wow. Burt Reynolds, uh, start, what was that shit called? <laughs> Smoking the Bandit. Smoking the Bandit. The bandit. <laughs> all that, you know, so we lived all that, man. We lived every little film, television, music, it was, but it was why? Because we were watching what the adults were watching. We were paying attention to what they were doing, because every time they spoke... And when you watch, you learn. Yeah, man. Man, anytime they congregated, it was like, okay, we'd be playing, but we'd be ear hustling too. Like, yeah, hey, what's, yeah, going right. what's going on? What's going on? That's why I used to always tell you when they played the um, yeah. the uh, Rudy Ray Moore and the Richard Pryor, go to bed now because <laughs> it's, 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 it's adult on. time. Yes. And you'd be at the door like, hey, I told the nigga. <laughs> He's just going to tell a story for 30 minutes. <laughs> I remember I used to have to go away. We're about to play some Richard Pryor now, Pookie, so you're going to have to go away. Mm. And I'd be right there in the hall going, oh, it's Richard Pryor. <laughs> yes, man. Who's this genius? Who's this genius? <laughs> so, so, yeah, so what was your first radio gig? So, yeah, so then, okay, so then I'll take it back now. Okay, the radio gig is coming up. Now, the, the DJ, the, the DJ at the first house party was in 1986. Now, I set out to start doing this in 83. Didn't get turntables till around 84, right in that 84, 85 peak. But I was still studying, watching, trying to go. Any opportunity I got to practice or to just better myself as a DJ, I knew that I had to do that before I went out and showed and yeah, displayed. Yeah, absolutely, right? Absolutely. You want to show up short, man, and oh, fucking... Man. And I did that one time. I'll tell you, the first time I was on the radio was at World on Wheels Ooh, in, in '85. The first, one of the first Mixmaster tryouts. Now, me, I didn't even know what was going on. I, I knew I had a passion for DJing. I had, I listened to K Day and stuff, but I still, all my skills weren't up to par. I was still like, I had never DJed on a 1200 turntable. I went down the world on wheels in 1985. And I remember, oh, that's when Joe Cooley and M Walk got into the Mix Masters. 1985 World on Wheels. We go down the first time I see Greg Mack, Tony G, this Cuban dude, who I thought was Mexican at first, but he was raised around Mexicans and stuff. He, Tony Gonzalez, man, one of the baddest DJs you, you, you ever come across at that time because he was very. He was very eclectic too. He could play any of those records that I just talked about, mix them up, yeah, yeah. disco, high energy music. He New was really very influential yeah, yeah. at K Day, you know. And he was an elder to me because I was still 12, 13. He used to do that, wasn't he? He was doing the high energy, the high mix. energy show. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was one of the guys that was very influential in bringing a lot of other type of music to K Day, also, which was still urban. There was a whole nother following happening in Los Angeles, like that whole DJ movement yeah. where the trucks, the crews, party crews would come out, cats would party. There was a flyer. You knew you were on the flyer. You were going to be the there. System, right, right. The systems in cars were getting bigger oh, and better at that time. <laughs> yep. Your face, man. You didn't even oh. hear the words anymore. You just Word felt up. the bass. <laughs> oh, it was stupid, man. Oh, yeah. It was a fun time, man. And you always and then, knew someone who didn't have their uh, car, their truck grounded right because you hear that hum. <laughs> <laughs> we literally try to take some of the DJ speakers like the Serwin Vegas and shit and connect and, them and to and the get back. And get in there, right? Oh, my grandma killed me for yeah. a couple of speakers. Where, 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 house speakers in the back yeah. of the car. car. Where, where'd all the guys, the, the, the kids go back in the day? Was it Balboa? 
Is that where the cruise is? Park or like uh, a, um, or no, Costa Mesa and Costa Mesa or Balboa? Leg Lake. What would be Leg Lake? Leg Lake. And Whittier. Big, man. Leg Lake. That was, go- that was on until like 90, Canyon. 91. I'll never forget that. F- man. Leg Lake was I don't the fast forward. I'm going to take it back. So the DJ gig, I'm going to take you all right there with me to, to where we were at. World on Wheels. Um, yeah, World on Wheels. I go to go fucking try out for K-Day. Oh, I suck. But... <laughs> The thing about it was it taught me so much about, I went there, I'm thinking, they're going to have the records for me. No, they're not, motherfucker. You got to bring your own you fucking bring records, your own man. Records. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't know that. I was like, shit, that's K-Day. They got records. In my mind, I'm visualizing all this shit. I'm oh, like, yeah, I'm I, got like, oh, I got them. I got the whole shit. I'm going to kick it with them. I'm going to have fun. I got to play oh, their no. records. They're going to be so gracious about it. I'm thinking, man, then when I got there, it was like, uh-uh, motherfucker. It was like a boxing ring up in that piece. You know what I mean? Like, Cats was going that's for yeah, this, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 Tony yeah. G. Oh yeah, I'll never forget Tony G. This was like where Crips, straight Crips used to hang out at this place. World yeah. on Wheels was like Schoolyard Crips, crib, crib hood, yeah. the Harlem Crip Thirty. It was like the, it was the thirties and, and Schoolyard Crips that would be in there. And sometimes you know other gangs would try to sneak in there, but they were no joke. Tony G would be in there with a red sweatshirt on. He'd be like one of the only Hispanics in there, buffed out. Red sweatshirt, no crib, no nobody say shit to him, man. <laughs> nobody said it, nothing. And plus, they probably knew they was like, "That's the DJ." Yeah, man. he's fuck, he's providing our entertainment tonight. So don't fuck him up. Yeah, <laughs> don't <laughs> kill the DJ. <laughs> Whatever you do, <laughs> word up. So he's got this red sweatshirt, and I'm thinking, "What the? What? I'm like, hold up, dude. Like, I'm from this neighborhood because World on Wheels was literally on the other side of San Vicente. Mm-hmm. I grew up on Highland right before, so I snuck out of the house that night, got in trouble, of course. But it was like, uh-uh, I'm going to try this K-Day thing. And that was when I first really saw how DJs how it works and how it all gets down. down. Yeah, yeah. Competition, how you go try out. It's like, hey, dude, you got to bring your own shit. Somebody bring your own needles, your own headphones, your own scratch pads. That night, Tony was cool. He let a lot of DJs. I mean, it was like 200 DJs. It was like a, a room packed of DJs. Man, it was so many. Every super DJ from the from the city came out. Yeah. Boulevard Rod from Ultra Wave. Joe Cooley came out. He won that night. M Walk. You had uh cats that was like Scratch Cat. I just remember all this going off memory because I was really in awe. I was like, damn, I'm seeing all these fucking dudes came come out of nowhere to come yeah. try out for this K Day shit, right? And I'm um, Tony G. I, I was like literally like I was I was so far up on the turntables that, you know what I mean? I could have blew the needle from the right, record right. and shit. So Tony got up <laughs> on me. He's like, listen, man. He said, I'm going to tell you one more because I didn't know Tony G. That was the first time I'd ever seen any of these dudes, Greg yeah. Mack, any of that. And I was like, I knew that I had to be down with them, but I just didn't know how I was going to do it just right. yet. You, uh, you, you wanted to, in, but you but didn't know how you were going to get in. Yeah, because I was like, dude, I got to be with the dopest DJ crew if I want to really make a name for myself. I got to be with the best DJ crew. I knew that early on. Because I was like, I'd already been doing business at house parties and, and doing little stuff like that, yeah, yeah. gigs. But I hadn't really felt like, you know what I'm saying? So anyhow, well, anyway, this is the first stage. I didn't clinch the K-Day shit yet. This yeah. is where I first go and I fuck, fuck all up. I go, I play the record. Like the pitch control, you know, it's all the way down. I go reverse. So I play It's Time. Everybody was scratching It's Time. I play It's Time. I'm like, It's Time. I played the screwed version, like the, the slow, super slow version. Yeah. Fucking up. Scratch. I got a scratch or two in. <laughs> But it did get taped, and and people were like, "We heard you on the radio and <laughs> shit." Greg Mack was like, "Yeah, we got thirteen year old, uh, uh, Ralph, Ralph, thirteen year old," and he said it on the radio too. And I remember I had a copy of that man. Rob One, rest in peace. He was one that had DJ Rob One, who was down with CBS, was also a good friend of ours. Went to John Burroughs. I met him in 1984 as well, along with Rocka from Dilated Peoples. Met him in 1984 at John Burroughs. Like this was the hub, dude. This was like the school on Wilshire and Highland, right. and it was like a little bit of everybody went there. JB, man. Oh, oh my God. So yeah. So I check in. Of course, AJ. He went. He was fortunate enough to go. To a school with uh, Lena Horn's granddaughter, Lena, who was gorgeous, <laughs> gorgeous. She was in gymnastics. Were you in gymnastics? Regalado. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's the teacher, Miss Regalado, right? So anyway, we were reminiscing, talking about that. But those are little bits and pieces of people that I saw and just never forgot. I was like, who's that girl? That girl was gorgeous. Chandler, rest in peace, man. Big ups to Jocko. Those were the cats at JB that was breaking down. Steve G, yeah, Asian dude. I had to battle that dude, man, on the breakdance tip, right? It's 84. Now, we're going all over the place, ladies and gentlemen, but there's a purpose. I promise you. You know, you go back, you, you know, you listen to what I'm talking about, you'll get the bits and pieces of who Ralph M., you know, who, how I got my start, and then up to this point, you know, and it's like, it's, it's a little bit of, just a lot of episodes, a lot of chapters. Because there's so much that what that happened. Yeah, man. It's so much that happened between early '80s and being 
13 and to fast forward it to now when you're in your, your 40s or yes and and it's just so much i mean you can't even pinpoint it all because like yeah. when i try to tell the story of hip-hop i'm like well k-day and then world on wheels and then and then skateland and i saw run dmc and yeah, well, EPMD. i and, heard i, I right. heard you mentioned three other letters what was that oh nwa oh nwa you, you mentioned nwa yeah. earlier yeah, you that, have NWA story history. Part. Well, the first I'll just put it out there. Anybody that has an NWA record with Easy E's uh, actual address in Compton, you got a gem right there. You got the real, real first pressings of the Easy E Boys in the Hood. It has Easy E's um, his mother's address or, or the house that you sure, know in Compton. Right. It's got that's that the address. Old business address. So look for that. <laughs> yeah, that's the first. Um, exactly. And you, you were a part of that? Well, I I saw the record. I didn't really get it, but I, we, we see Easy E early on. Okay. He'd come up to World on Wheels. He would deal with Tony G and with Julio and Greg Mack early on because when he had those records out, he was already independent. When I would see Easy E, we crossed paths a few times, but we never really had like because I was I respected him. I was like, no, that's Easy E, man. I was still a youngster, so yeah, I wouldn't yeah, yeah. go out of my way to really be like, yo, what's up? Right, man? star Some fuck cats, him on it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And other cats like King T. Once the cats that started recognizing that I was playing their records, Easy E and them, they knew, they knew who. Yeah, yeah. Because they were listening, but um, a lot of the times they just weren't, weren't like you know, they were stars, man. Right. To us, they right, were right, big right. already. You, you, Give them their space, they you know? Give them their space. You see Easy e you're like, no, nah, that's easy, man. Look, leave him alone. He's over there with the brick phone and shit. He's over there closing, <laughs> closing deals and with the 300ZX and shit. And he's <laughs> yeah, with the T-tops. With, with the T-tops. Like uh, Joe Cooley and Rodney O, man. They had them shits, man. They were dope, too. They were some of the dopest West Coast groups. It's just they didn't get that NWA presence, but they still were known throughout you know, throughout the United States and even in other parts of the world, man. If people study West Coast hip hop, you'll know about uh, Rodney O and Joe Cooley and Mixmaster Spade and Toddy T. Uh, you know, cats like a Disco Daddy, Bad so, Ram. So you think so? Yeah, are, cats are, are, were like um, uh, Rich Rich Kaysen that was on Saturn Records. You had um, dude, what's my fucking cat? Ralph is named. Okay, but just like, Ralph's named like a fucking hundred people. <laughs> I, mean, the, I have no idea who the fuck they are. I ain't even are. got to the RIPs yet. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's what I'm saying. I mean, there's so but, many. But there's so, so many people so out there. You, cats. Right, so you're yeah. saying that without NWA, mm -hmm. basically breaking the egg for West Coast. Yeah. None of those people would even exist, pretty much? Well, I'll go back one person on that one. I would say Ice-T with the, with the six in the morning, right? Because right. that precedes the Easy e Boys in the Hood just by like a few months, right? It's like before that. Right. It, it, yeah. So Something was going to happen either right. way. Like, like you're saying, like you know, right. Ice-T was out there. But, I mean, like you, with, with the way you put that, that statement, though, Pook, it's like, of course, something was going to happen. I mean, not – but – because it was NWA and the, their sound came out the way it sounded, I mean something was. I mean, it was. It was. But they had like, a doctor it, on their team. Well, yeah, they had a doctor on their <laughs> they team. They had a doctor. <laughs> they, but it was all. It, right. it's, something was coming. You know right. that that sound was coming. Certainly. Oh yeah, cats were getting restless, man, because uh, Michael Jackson wasn't doing it anymore at that point. You know what I mean? And so it was starting to get to that. Well, and the pop. I think the pop. Yeah. The, the pop of it too was starting to get kind of soft. You know, and 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 the, and the streets was heating up. You yeah, know, and then yeah. there was like tension, and we were all getting to the age we were. And you know, becoming men and shit, yeah. and fucking like you know, well, and then there's, and you gotta understand the well, it, was, it was on, it was on. And and gang banging was real, man. Not only but gang banging, yeah. but then but 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 yeah. as DJs, your guys' your guys' styles was also the right. way you had presented yourself. Like you're yes. a one man gang, you know. It's like yeah. you, like you said, you had to be battling everybody. Oh yeah. So there, yeah. there wasn't just I mean there wasn't just one like one DJ. There's fucking hundreds of you out there trying to get fucking status. You but know? wait, but that but that's only in the West Coast because the East Coast DJs right already had their you know they had a a bigger crew than what we had at yeah. that time. Well, yeah. Okay. They were already, of course, established in the whole night. Because you know, some of yeah. the West Coast guys had to say, what are they doing over here in the East Coast? Because Popping, breaking. Because to me. <laughs> That's right. what was happening. Yeah, man. Us and being in the West Coast, <laughs> we, had, we saw what was going on. Somebody had a cousin or someone that was bringing this stuff from the East Coast and bringing it to the West Coast. And then we're like, wait a minute, they're doing what? Yeah. How, do we, how do we do this? Yeah. Because like, you got to remember, Mid '80s, right. you still got Jam Master J, yes. Houdini, yeah. Uh, uh, um, who else was at that? And time? Nucleus at the time. You had, um, you know, Fresh Fest when that came through, you know, and Curtis Young Blow, Young LL Cool J, Curtis Hell Blow. Yeah. Curtis they, those Blow. guys all had DJs. Yeah. Okay. Grandmaster Flash, of course, all that uh, that flyness. See, I didn't even know that Grandmaster Flash hated the message. 
Did you know that? That he actually hates that record. The, the slow the version. Me- yeah, the, yeah. The, he, the, hates- he hates that record. Why? Because that record was created at a time where he was already kind of like the White Lines. Yeah, like yeah. All those songs. Who the fuck hates they White Lines? Sending, Nobody. They were fucking, Nobody. They were fucking with Grandmaster Flash right. at that point because he was tooting and shit at that point. Yeah. So he was already fucking around and... and there was a divide between him and his group and the, and Sylvia and, Robin, and, 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 and money and, and she was feeding that shit. Yeah. So she was like, white lines, don't do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. And it do wasn't it, do it. right. <laughs> Sylvia was right. a bitch. That, she was, she was and crazy. Same, yeah. And same with the guy, because Duke booty was, who was a in-house musician at, at Sugar Hill. He was the one that don't push me. Cause I'm close. Like everybody thinks that he was part of the flat. No, that's Duke booty. That's a, one of the in-house musicians at, at uh, Sugar Hill. He was dope though. He had dope concepts. He's the one that played the drum beat for the for the message and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, so he was he was fly, man. Duke Booty was dope. He had a dope voice. That shit that uh that shit of can't even see the game or the Sugar Ray fight. The bill collectors. The man, come on, dude. That was dope. But that divided them up, dude. And that wasn't even he wasn't even part of that, man. We're fucking all over the fucking yeah. table here, dude. <laughs> right? No, now no, we're talking no, no, DJ no, 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 record no, no, shit, like, right? So Ralph, yeah. I mean, Ralph has got fucking it's <laughs> hundreds of fucking people. But no, my question was like, so when do you yes, get sir. in? When do you get into the door at the radio station? When your you first radio gig? When so, do you get the gig? So, so 1987. All right. Now, I already been doing my 10,000 hours of training, of studying. Yes. You know how to get the, get the fuck out of situations. Motherfuckers are getting shot. Right. Don't throw that. Get don't, my records don't, in the crate. Don't, gone. Don't, don't play that record at this, this particular time right. of the night. Right, right, right. Because that's when everybody. To these fools out here. Yeah, right, right, right. Man, yeah. you have songs. That, a lot of learning going there's, on. There's rules to music. <laughs> yeah. Man, Lots I'm of- telling you. There'd be spots I didn't show up to, and they'd be like, yo, the DJ got shot, and his, they got his hand. Right. Somebody shot the DJ <laughs> Like, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, crazy shit, right? And then, so these were just all part of the stuff that I had to go through. Finally, 1987 kicks in. I start really hanging out with cats that that are like maybe three, four years old. I'm 15 now. I'm hanging out with the 17, 18 year old cats that are in high school. They're partying at those places that were already two years from 86 to about 88, man. That shit was just every weekend. Flyer parties. Come to this, come to that, come to that. We go to five parties in a night just to go DJ. Knock the set out, go to the next party. Dance go, contest, right? Dance contest <laughs> or the girls, fly girls. The girls were, you know, this is what they call the Aquanet set. Like when girls were wearing the Aqua Tees in yeah, the yeah, hairs yeah. and doing, guys <laughs> yeah, had the flat tops. And, and then all this other stuff came in from both sides, from the Latin side, the uh, African-American side, the trendy stuff started kicking in, you know, and then everybody else just kind of joined in, you know. Well, okay, so 1987. Of course, I grew up in Los Angeles, Miracle Mile right there, right on the cusp of Mid-City, Miracle Mile. Boom. One of the older guys, he's like, yo, dude, he's like, you got to go try out for K-Day. He's like my elder homeboy. His name is Tico. Rest, I mean, uh, salute to him. Man. He's a Costa Rican dude, Tico. He always looked out for me. And um, so I had elders. I had cats that looked out. They were sure. just like guardians and shit. I was thankful because they'd come pick me up on a Friday night, and we'd go to the party. They'd take me home, you know, and make yeah, sure I was make sure safe. you stayed alive. And, and we got yeah, some Tommies or something yeah, yeah, at the yeah, end yeah, of the night, right. Astro Burgers or whatever, right. and I was safe. Yeah. And that kept me. I didn't, you know, there, there were no drugs. There was no alcohol. Yeah. There was no nothing. I was just a clean-cut 15-year-old DJ, yeah. student. Trying to just, yeah, right? <laughs> the only thing I wanted was to, to rock turntables no, and right? buy I mean, records, man. And, that, was, and that, that was your and fucking. I, and that's what I was all about. I was just about, oh, get that stack. Let's go to that party. Let's go rock this this piece, you know. And then let me get get me home. And, you know, and then cats would be like, we got, we're got going to take you to this party tonight, man. We think we got this dude, man. He thinks he could scratch, man. We're going to put you up there. We gonna, we want you to turn him out, man. We just want yeah. you to fucking. So you, were the, so you were clowning. Like I had to do that cool. sometimes. Right, right, right. Yeah, you were their weapon. <laughs> shit, yeah, I was their little secret weapon. So anyhow, 1987. He's like, we going up there so you can try out for the mix masters. I was like, what? I was like, well, that's the skate land though. We got to go to skate land USA, yeah, where, where NWA about. did their their yep. first show in yep. the movie. Yep. I had to go there, and that's all Bloods. Those are Pyru Bloods, yep. um, cats from 135th and Central, Dude, ladies and Park, gentlemen. Pyru, Pyrus, the fruit town Pyrus. There you go. Tree top. See, oh man, like the whole show. <laughs> There's so many rules to DJing. <laughs> Hey man, it was on. You just had to know where to step. That was like that third rail. You, you gotta know, know what, what I mean? set like, you're gonna walking into. Word right. up. You so I'm walking set, in yeah. and I'm like, okay, so luckily I got my red jacket on, you know, my red feeler jacket and shit. I Skate love, there I, was no joke. Yeah, yeah. I'm chilling. I got bloods over here. They're like, yo, hey man. They're like, hey, what's up, man? They're like, what you, you you gonna go in there and DJ, man? Hey man, don't play no Mexican music, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already like, getting already. harassed at the door, man. We ain't even walked in yet. You know what I mean? But, hey, I was raised by bullies. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? When you grew up in the 80s, 
And you grew up, you were, we were raised by bullies, man. Right, so right. we had to know how to avoid, how to not say but shit. But you, like you to, said, but you, you said too, you were running around with a bunch of older cats too that fucking had your back. So yeah. you know what I'm saying? You're like, yeah. all right, all right, yeah. calm the fuck down. And they were cool know? too. So right. they were like, no, no, don't say nothing, don't say nothing. Yeah, cool. yeah, they were right. like, there was Those were just, they just knew. They were like, no, 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 yeah. don't say nothing. It's cool. Like, yeah, all right. Did we're, you we're, play Mexican we're, music? <laughs> 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 right? I had to go in and turn motherfuckers out, man. Right. And so, but then that was my strategy, right? To go and play some fucking Mexican music. Trip. Now, this, this is why they call me the Mexican, right? I, I became that later. But so fast. So I'm, not, I'm still Ralph M. I'm Ralph M. Boom, I go in. And then I, my strategy is like, yo, all these dudes are getting on. Dude, that was the night that a lot of DJs showed up to Skateland. The bloods are sweating. They're over there taking pictures. They're distracted for a little while. So I'm over here trying to figure out. Like, all the DJs are starting to show up now. And I'm like, what's up? I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? Am I going to go too soon? I had to use that strategy. I'm like, hey. Wait, just wait, just let that, let them go, let them go. I was literally the last guy that got on at, at the end of the night. But see, K Day would broadcast at, from like 11 to, to like maybe 1 in the morning. 11, I think it was 11 to 2. Yeah, they'd broadcast live from the skating rink or whatever. Live from Skateland. Yeah. Oh, it was dope. Oh, and so they were doing the Mixmaster tryouts that night. So they were like, we're going to have the Mixmaster comp, the tryouts live on the radio. And we're going to find remember. our next new Mixmasters because they're going to be on the, they're going to be right there in the hot seat. Yeah. And, and so now, fast forward a couple of years later from my first initial attempt, my yeah. shallow attempt at trying yeah. to become a Mixmaster, you know, and join the crew. Um, I go and I turn that I turn that fucking place out, man. Yeah. I kill it, dude. I kill it. even Rob. Warner, Everybody's skating, yeah. right? Everybody's people skating. Everybody's you know, skating. skating. Yeah, it's a jumping time. It's jumping. Yeah. Oh, and then when we're in there killing it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that night I had to prove myself to the M Walks and the Tony G. Remember, uh, a bunch and of other cats were there as well. They tried out. They didn't do that good. Okay. So that was my one up on them. I was like, if I'm gonna get this, I better get it now. Yeah. So I had to go all the way to the other side of town to go to go clinch that, and it was cool, man. It was one of the greatest feelings, man. I never forget that feeling because they, they you could tell that I had I had gotten their approval. They was like, yo. They Who's was the, like Tony that's G, the kid. and them dudes was like, yo. Get him. They was like, yo, and Greg was like. Mm. Well, okay. Greg has always been like that. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, he was like, because really, like Tony G and them dudes, they they were, they know. Like they if they told Greg Mac, yo, dude, you get this kid. This kid's deaf. I remember Tone or somebody said that in the back. He's like, yo, this kid's deaf right here. He's like, this kid's deaf. <laughs> and I was, I was just like, I was, I was like, fuck that. I'm going to get busy some more. And I'm going to show you some more shit. And I was like, yo. I remember at one point, I had gotten, went from hip hop to like, because I, I went in right after the DJ that went on before me. I, I was like, go right in. Don't stop. Don't just blend. I'll just jump right off of his record, his last record coming right out. Right in there, right. Spontaneous, right. right. Blending the next. Cool. And it made sense. Go right in. I start rocking. I play a little old school, and I play some new. I had a couple of records that were some of the cats that had just put out their first record on Delicious Vinyl, which is the homeboy uh, DJ Romeo, M Walk, and Master Rhyme. Which we, later I joined them, and we become the NWA antithesis. But that's in going another couple of years. So trip. That's like two podcasts from now. <laughs> <laughs> I showed, and it was crazy because we were the union, right? We became M Walk in the union. I met M Walk through K Day. Tony G. Now they welcome me in. I don't even know I'm a mix master until 19. It, it, it happened at the end of '87. They named all the mix masters, and then cats. I was at LA High School at the time, so cats was like, "Yo, man, we heard your name on the radio. Do you a mix master? We heard them say your name." I didn't listen to it that day. They had done a countdown, and at the end of the countdown, it was like the, the new year countdown, you know, the Hot 100 or whatever. They're like, we're going to name the new Mixmasters. So for like a month, man, I didn't know. And they were, kept telling me, yo, get in touch with Greg Mack, do this. And I kept calling and, you know, the whole, sure. you know, the answering service days, you know, the answering machine <laughs> right, days right. and shit. You know what I mean? So I'm over there trying to catch Greg Mack. Finally, I catch up with him. We meet up. I'm still 15, 16. I ain't really old enough to even go into a club, right? But I'm hanging out with these dudes, man. I'm finally in. They're like, yo, we're going to start getting you guys on. Because Tony and Julio and the other guys were getting more heavy into production. That's when he started producing Mellow Man Ace, Kid Frost, Booyah Tribe. So yep. he started getting into that next world. Delicious Vinyl comes on the scene in 1987. And they're literally, you know, M Walk. That's going through. So, you know, I was like right at the right situation. To, right to, time, to, right place. Right time, right place. So I'm like, they're like, okay, cool. 1988, 89 comes. M Walk has this deal for for um, for um, 
Capitol Records. He's doing a compilation. And it's like 10, 11, 12 groups. So Greg Max like, yo, why don't you get him, link him up with this rapper that he knew. He was real dope. His name was Tab Doe. Name the, the Amazing Boombox. This dude was super dope. He was from Philly. Samaj the Shields, super one of my first. He was the first rapper that I DJed for on Vine, or like on for actual release. Right, and it was on Capitol, dude. So that's cool. You know, it was it was a blessing, man. And that whole if you go back and look, M Walk in the Union, Romeo and Rhyme. That's why Easy E says that. He says that on uh, Easier Said Than Done. He goes, uh, Master Rhyme is a toy. I'm eating steak while you're, while you're sucking on what girls enjoy. And he says that, how you going to diss me? You don't even know me. Yo, Ren, get the gat. Show them where it's at on the easier said than done. Yeah. If you hear that song, they had to answer them. They had to answer a local group. Now, here's NWA that's fucking worldwide at this global. point. They're like, yeah, they're global, nationwide for sure. Yeah, yeah. And really kicking up dust. Now, you got this group from L.A. that's like calling them out. And they're actually getting the spin on the radio. Romeo and Rhyme, nothing but a fan. You go look that up, you guys, the DJs and historians and stuff, cats that want to know about West Coast early stuff, K-Day music that, you know, people don't play anymore, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that you go back and you're going to get a dose of some goodness. Nothing but a fan. Romeo and Rhyme had, they were on the, uh, they were they were at a gravesite. And this was before Easy e died. Yeah. They were at, at a rest in peace. They had a... Oh. They, they oh like, no! They were they, clown, they were kind of like clowning him, like you're, you're, but like a death to you and your like your crew and your your music and all that stuff. We're gonna before he died, they they were doing a fucking this is tombstone fucking Photoshop. They did a tombstone shot in 1989. Wow! You can probably find it on YouTube. I, I I've looked for it. It's on there. It's wow. on there if you look for Romeo and Ron. So that cover and then and then That's it like says Tiffany, like the yeah. clowning, you know, like. The grave site says Easy e It's crossed out. And it says 187 God. underneath. Wow! It word up, because Master Rhyme was from Compton. And he was a real dude, man. So he had got into it with MC Ran over just like some little shit that happened in a backstage area. It was yeah. like, yo, what, what's up? You want to go outside and you want to battle? And yeah, Master yeah, yeah. Ryan was like, yo, you want to battle? And then the way MC Ren tells the story, he's like, man, I thought he wanted to go outside and squab. It was fight. And right, shit. So yeah. He was chingasos. like, I was ready. Yeah, I'm ready to go throw some chingasos and shit, right? So boom. All right. Nothing happens. There's a beef. Master Rhyme is like, fuck that. I'm going to write a song and do that. And, yeah, so, and, then, and, 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 and battle songs, right? I mean, that was kind of like the beginning of how that back and forth. I mean, even right. East Coast wasn't even, there was no like really West Coast, right? Pook, I mean, to even like yeah, battle. No I mean, there was yeah. like, there no, was no it title about right. it. Yeah. No. We weren't like, oh, we're two West Coast groups going at each other. It was like, nope. It was just like, hey, these are two groups. There was like, it was still the, there was no formation yet, right? It was the formative, nope. early, early no formative. formation. Ever. Like, it was just Ice T. Rhyme Syndicate, <laughs> right? It was like, and the cast that were down with him, King T, it was the Bronx Style oh, Bob. Forget, you know who was? Who else was with him? Spin Masters, uh, Henry Everlast. E, Everlast, of course. Everlast. He had that song Syndication on Young there. Young Everlast. They played that on K Day. It stopped. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody <laughs> look what's Everlast. going down. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> okay, well, Ralph, do you, do yes, you, are you still radio DJing? Are you still playing do, on, the, on, I, I on there? I do when I can, when I can get on, you know, I mean, before, like, I DJed at all these stations at one time, whether it was as a guest DJ or coming in. How to, old are you now, Ralph? I'm 45. So you're, you're my age, right? So yes, that's sir. The, so, yeah, right. So yeah. you, throughout your, you know, your adult life, you know, you, you, you've you you've traveled all the radio stations here in Los Angeles. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Put in time. And but did a lot of work over at, a, well, of course, with K-Day. I was very blessed to have gotten that opportunity. How long opportunity. you work for K-Day? K-Day, I got in at the, uh, 88, and then it went to 91. We went till about close to 90, like right at the tail end of 89, because the radio station had already been sold. They were trying to compete with FM. This is right before. That's this when is, they made that thing, the dumbest thing in the world, mm -hmm. AM Stereo. Right, right. AM Stereo. There is no, stereo. There is there is no AM wow. Stereo. It is if you have two speakers. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> there you go. Quad that it. motherfucker. Quad it. But you know what the saddest thing about K-Day was? You know, after yeah. 6 o'clock when they turn off the switch. Yes. Then everything, the, the 50,000, for the, right. the 50,000 That was the reason why you could hear that sometimes. Because sometimes they wouldn't turn the switch off. Right. And you could hear that shit all the way. Bouncing the, the, the down the Oakland, fucking. Oakland, Frisco, right, right, Fresno. Right, right, Down south. It's like, oh, it's like oh, 6 o'clock, just turn the 50,000 watts to 10,000. Yeah, like, the, you know, there were rumors. There were people were saying in Japan and in Hawaii. I'm like, come on, y'all. This is kind of like. Right. I, I, no, I, mean, but I don't want to no, try. But, but you know what's crazy? There's, yeah. there's all kinds of. The, the AM bandwidth, it is. It, mm. it does travel. It people, does travel. People say that they've heard. There's, Right. Like, just like, from like, uh, there's even like, you know, from like astronauts in space and shit where right. you can, you, you just pick up that's, just frequencies, awesome. you know, the amplitude. AM, the, yeah, that amplitude, huh? Well, you know, you know, amplitude they, modulation. They send, they send yeah. sound, they yeah. send hip hop and all kind of crazy stuff up in space to see if, the, right. see if there's some aliens out there listening. This is, 
It sends some uh, it sends well, music K-Day, up there. K-Day always had. Like, They're a, out there, but they ain't listening. <laughs> hey, but trip this. Actually, K they did play Mexican music because you could hear the little Mexican now, music now, now, real now, low. Now. The frequencies they were crossing yeah, into the, the cross into feeds. the, into hey, the, the cross the, feeds. How about right. the funniest thing is when people don't understand when that uh, uh, I'm on the radio, radio, easy right. radio. Right. When he's doing their switch oh, in the station, oh, and it goes yeah. through the, the Spanish, and it goes, right, right. "How hot is, is hot?" hot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Whatever that song. That was dope, man. And Greg Mack, of course. I, mean, I was there when he did the, the thing with Easy E. I mean, I wasn't at the studio, but I remember when he went to go and do that because he's the announcer on that radio. Right. Hey, this is so I was telling them that you you DJ for oh. Kid Frost. Oh no, still no, five five. Okay. So yeah. So then. Okay, K Day, Greg Mack, everybody, and walking the union. I do that. I'm still kind of out there because at that's this point, I'm still just DJing at K Day. This is '89. I'm on my. I'm at Fairfax now, and I'm and I'm on my graduate year. This is this is my senior year. So now I'm like, all right, cool. I'm doing okay. I got a little a little bit of money because we we Greg hooked up a few things for us to do some DJing overseas. We had a radio show in like Osaka, like in Japan, like in the, those markets. Yeah. So okay. we'd get we'd get paid for doing that. So we started doing that, and then we'd get a little money, and that was cool. I had like back then it'd be fifteen, sixteen, and I had like fifteen hundred bucks, two Gs was cool. Fuck you know, yeah, 80, man. 80, 80, hey, man, that's cool now. <laughs> Word up. Yes, sir. That's rent. That still goes a long way. That's cool yeah. now. Yeah, man. No joke. And so I was like, cool, I'm set for my graduation year. So then K-Day was like, look, we're not going to have you guys come back. We're going to want you guys to chill. We're going to get – and then – so they stuck because the station was done. It was already being sold. They were trying to do all this other right. shit. Right, so you had it. to make and other plans. And- had to make – so that's, that's when the, the – I, I rolled out my senior year. That right. was my senior year. I was like, you know what? This is gonna be a fun year, man. I'm still, I'm still loving life. I'm still listening to Kate. I'm still buying records. I'm on, a, I'm on a whole nother page now over here, trying to learn about production now. SP 1200s yep. are starting to exist. The production values, you know, dudes are making dope beats now, and EPMD and. NWA really killed it, man. Their production, the way they did it, man. Well, and I mean, as far as they for say, that time, I mean, Dre's the fucking. It's what they call him, the doctor, yeah. man. So did, and, you and, get to, did you get to hang with Dre at any time? You know what? I met I met Dr. Dre. The first time I ever met him was actually with Be Real in 1993 with Snoop, which was we went to this place called Larry Parker's, which and is that's game that. game over. <laughs> game over. Oh. Sorry, sorry, Be Real. Yeah, <laughs> just game over. Over. Oh, yeah. oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah. I was cheering for Dodgers and Larry Parker. <laughs> <laughs> right on time, too. I thought I, thought I heard Larry Parker. Right. Yeah, yeah. That Todd, Larry did you Parker ever go was... with us to Larry Parker's? No. That no. spot was over there off of, uh, it was on Beverly Drive, right? It was yeah. Beverly Drive. They did, not like, they did not like the brothers out the there. Out the right Late in between night, that. They were not trying to hear us. Right, late it at was night. Not, oh, yeah. There was not well, liking he made, that. He made, he made a lot of money, and then Off he just us. disappeared. Like actual yeah. Larry Parker? Oh, yeah, Larry, Larry, Larry Parker. Larry no, Parker no, got no, me 2.1 million. Not the attorney, million. but oh, the, okay. no. there was a guy that <laughs> Sorry, had a no. restaurant. Was a, was, I, I was changing yeah. the channel. No, yeah, I was watching the game. I wasn't paying attention. Sorry. He was a fat Jew. He's a fat Jew. Oh, no. No no offense, y'all. Why can't he just be fat? Because he he made sure that you know that he was Jewish. Oh, all right. And he loved everything black. He even put a cross color store right next to his. <laughs> Remember, he had Threads cross for color. Life. He had a store right there. And, oh wow! And inside his yeah. restaurant, the best thing about Larry Parker's restaurant when you came there, it was that night, late night, and his menu was the Snoop Doggy Dog hot dog. There you go. If yep. you were, if you what were, was on that? If, if, if you on were the menu famous, was, right? You were you, your name. You made the menu. Word you up. made the menu. Word up. What's what's the poop dog? I didn't make it then. Yeah, I was still. Young. <laughs> hey, yeah, but like I, back I, then was like when uh, LL Cool J had pink cookies, pink cookies and in a, in a you know pink cookies and cream. So they had like the, the ice cream with the LL Cool J cookies. That was the first time I ever you know, had all that kind of stuff. But he see, had food though. Had, he had good food. They had very good food. But this is the first time I ever had a seven dollar shake. Was at Larry Parker's, and that was. That was that was <laughs> the was best shake. <laughs> and it was, was Doss. <laughs> yeah, that was party, man. It's like they had music. Hey, as soon as in today's artist, world, that's a twenty dollars shake. But right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, inflation. Yeah, they got the soup wheel. Anyway, the shakes. We'll talk about that next, man, because there's all kind of shit, man. When it comes to food and music, ah, Lee, so, I love so it. Then, so then, yes. uh, then if you, do, how many? 
like the radio station, like how much, so when you get out of high school and you start doing this, you start make, making a living as a DJ. I mean, that's what you, that's what that's I started doing. I had to set out to do that. Well, once I was 15, we were like, hey man, we're charging making $150 at these, at these, at these parties. So I'd go rent the speakers for 50 bucks at Astro right there on 6th and Alvarado over there. Big up to Craig, Craig uh, Merrick. Yeah, Craig Merrick. Yeah, Craig Merrick. That's MacArthur Park. Great area. Yeah, Great area. right on. Great area. Oh, that was right there. That's where Ooh. Radio Tron was. This guy had one of the original. <laughs> I know radio. It was radio, radio, radio. And it was hey, there was a lot of crack valves. Plug radio, the yeah, over there. Come on, it man. It was crack that was. This oh, I got and, yeah, I got and, my and first little... license from there. <laughs> You ain't, get one ain't of those? catch your body, huh? Oh, uh, my goodness. Yeah, bro. They, hey, man, they found people that were dead when they drained when they drained that lake. Um, they found a lot yeah, of bodies yeah. in there, dude. Yeah, hell yeah, right? I went there last night. I went there two nights ago. <laughs> yeah, I went, yeah, Todd went there a couple nights ago I was for there that. two nights ago looking for a dead body. <laughs> but no, nobody. Was a call. Do you know what the big thing there is now? What's up? Urban fishing. Oh, shit. It's all have you, have, you, have you seen that? There's, there's guys down there yeah. fishing in that park and bringing people in. Like, hey, you guys want to experience fishing and stuff? Urban fishing going wow. on at right MacArthur Park. The city. Yeah. Do not eat that fish. Yeah, don't, don't fuck, fuck around. No, right? <laughs> dead people in there. That's dead people. They've been eating on dead from, people. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, that's old school, man. MacArthur Park was beautiful at one time, though. I mean, yeah, yeah, that one, one time. time. That Go back. one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, no, at one, not that one, at one time. <laughs> no, you not said it right just the first time. that one it, time. It was, it was beautiful before the crack era. Man. Like, definitely, for sure. So, yeah, but. What, so now, okay, but. So let's fast forward a little bit now. Yeah. Pook says you've been doing some acting. Yes. Okay, so this is the new thing. That Well, something that I was like more so that kind of captivated me, has been gravitating me, pulling me in. And I thought about all these things as I was developing, you know, going from being a DJ to being in a group, of course, with Soul Assassins, rocking with, with Funk Dubious. Like, we didn't even get to that part yet. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's still the other chapter from the Kid Frost episodes. Kid Frost allowed me to really go and travel the world with him. I did over like I did close to like a thousand shows with him, and we did, and we was on Virgin. He was on Virgin Records. Right. So he was in 1990, bro. We went, he, he was the first guy that took me to Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah. He took me all around the Amsterdam world. Amsterdam in the 90s. That's in a the fun 19, fucking place. Bro, oh my God, <laughs> man. Right. First place I ever went to when we left as a young man, 18 years of age, was Amsterdam. Grasshopper, and the bulldog. Me, man, bulldog. That was our first spot. We stayed at the American Hotel. Yep, right. And guess who's there when we land? George Clinton. And we were like, oh, shit, George Clinton is staying. I had never met him or anything, but, you know, we were yeah, we was like, oh, Party synchronicities. Yeah, 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 Amsterdam. Synchronicities, man. Everybody and, and for me, there. it was like, come on, another one for the memory banks. Like, I'll, I'll, I met Bootsy Collins in France. Through Frost in 1990 during this festival, so I was rolling with Frost, man. Me and Frost, and we were talking Frost about that. Frost was what? This is for La Raza. Right? La Raza, yeah, man. This is for the Raza. Doom, doom, doom. The El Chicano, Viva Tirado. And they love that song. All Done over on the, the SP 1200. Tony G, killing them, killing them. That record was huge, man. Yeah. That record. That's what changed Power 106. To, that made Power play hip hop. That's what made hip. That's what made Power 106 change. Add hip hop to their to their format. Right. That was the first hip hop record. record to break through. Spanglish rap at that. Right, right. It, it came with something. You know, they had to. It was Mellow Man Ace and it was Kid Frost. You know, that really were the ones that broke that Power 106 FM radio. Yeah, we had the bigger um, boys in here a while, a couple yeah. shows back, man. Yep. They, were, they had some cool like old stories and told right. us about how. Yeah, it know, was it was the, the story between Jay Thomas and and them. That was the switch over, pretty mm. much. Top 40s. Mm -hmm. Tobacco Boys, hip hop. Well, and then the hip, and, wow. then, and then hip hop kind of just taking over the the, the basically the cha you know the station. That's what right. they, that's what power ended up you know being the, the station known for. Righteous, yeah. No, big up to the Baker Boys, man. I met them through Tony G in 1986. Now back in the day, I tell you, I met them at the Casa Casa Camino Real, right, right there on right Oak and Washington. Freeway. Hell yeah, right yeah, yeah. there. And that's Bob. Oh my God, on I a saw Saturday night. Friday, Saturday nights. In industry? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, oh, no, right down, 60, downtown LA. No, no, no. Right there off of the 10. I, I saw, I saw um, EPMD. No, I saw Run DMC perform there. I saw EPMD perform there. Yeah. And I'll never forget one day, and I have this tape yeah. at my house somewhere, and it was Ice T, mm -hmm. and he was he was barely coming. He was going to do Dog in the Wax. Wow. And when he but first he, came, he first came yeah. out, and he said, he said, uh, he took the old Michael Jackson, he said, stop, you sucker, MCs, go back home. And his D Evil E oh. was all, beep, 
Because I am here tonight <laughs> right. to rock shit on this microphone. You better stop, you sucker. MCs go back home. Ooh. Then he went then he went right into Dog in the Wax. That's and I was hard. like, what the hell is this? And I'm sitting in yeah. my bed. Yeah. Cause Katie, see what I what I try to tell a lot of radio systems what needs to happen now, Katie used to if you could not afford to go to the concert, they played the concert for their right. listeners. Right. Sure. So you could just lay in your bed and be like, man, I wish I was there. Yeah. Or if you got punishment. So what are they doing, like like live broadcasts? Live or or, or they just record it and play no, it later? No, live. live. It'll all be all live. Because you would Friday hear, night. fuck <laughs> shit. <laughs> God. <laughs> Right, but, the, but the and Katie they do it doing every all, Friday night. Every but Friday they, that's, night. that's I mean, that's a lot of fuck. That's a lot of work, right? I mean, a lot of hustle to get out there and set. And that was get just an AM show station and broadcast and get and get it right, and then they get this. I'll get this. All this great, you know, entertainment out to the listeners, man. Right. It's a lot right. of work. It was, it was amazing. But man. But you gotta understand, at that time, K Day was yeah. a radio for the people. Right, a community station. It was for a, sure. It was, it was a station yeah. for the people, and it was it was the it was the it was doing more numbers than its rival. KJLH and KAs, it was it was it was beating them because they had the youth. Yeah, yeah. that's right. No, oh, no, they were coming out there, and they were going to the neighborhoods. So right, they would do the They would go to the parties. Yeah. They would do. They would go Rory to Kaufman, all these, to all these, these really great mm-hmm. spots where I, like you said, all the youth, all the fucking underground shit was being played. Right, right. and that's why they got. That's why they have a, the following they had. Yeah, absolutely. No, they, they, they would reach out, man. They go out, they hit the community, they pass out the stickers, they show up at the events. T-shirts, Tony all the G fun, and them yeah. dudes would be DJing and doing stuff with right. Greg Mack and with Rory Kaufman. That's how it all snowballed into into that thing. It really just it was like I don't think that'll ever happen again. Quite this, of course not. But no, not it's, now. It was you amazing because it's too much of a, of a monopoly of the of iHeartRadio right. owns everything. Right, right and now, in clubs so you can't go to clubs no more because you gotta have the bottle service or the this. The right, that. Like, everything yeah, that, that is so that mandatory. Come again. So, right, yeah. it's all yeah, it's all compartmentalized and and and, and broken down into things that are yeah. you can't you can't just be a part of a big thing. Everybody wants a piece of something right. out of that bigger piece. Not now. even a party no more. Right, right? it's not it's just, business. Yeah, it's just like come sit. Here, spend yeah. this money. I'm gonna give it to you for fourteen hundred. Right? You know, like, no, you're right though, Ralph. That's what I'm saying. It's <laughs> yeah, like man. it's not even a party anymore. It's and so fucking... I'm just so thankful that I got to live that as yeah. a DJ to be able to express. That's why I still feel like, damn, man, I still want some more. Like I still right. love that no, feeling. No, 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 no. That's that's why. Yeah, you come to the Loud Loud Show. You're gonna get up on the tables here in a minute. But, <laughs> yes, sir. But, that, but that's what yes. Naked Boys are saying too. Yeah. Uh, um, which one? Which Nick. one? Nick was like, yeah. he's like, I, Nick misses being on the radio. He miss he he misses going out and 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 and, and being with the and people touching, and, touching, and, and, and mm-hmm. touching the you know and the, the crowd and feeling mm-hmm. it and then being on the radio yeah. for the, the time shift he's on. You know, it's just like he wants to get back into that and do that. And yeah, I'm, man. Absolutely. So, EMV. So when, those were the homies. EMV. Before I'm going to tell you a Baker Boy story real quick. EMV. That's when I met them. They gave yeah. me the card. It was Eric Nick Vidal. That was it. The ENV. Yeah. That's how I met them. And I met them to Tony at the Casa. Because I was like, who's this, who's this kid? He's, he was scratch. Casa Camino Real. And I was like, Tony was, was a cool dude, man, because he was such a dope DJ that he was never intimidated by anybody. Right. That he let the dopest anybody get on and right they'd be killing it. he wouldn't he wouldn't because he, he had enough confidence in what he was doing sure to be and he was our he was our dude he had yeah. seniority over the turntables he was just letting us get on because he was like oh these are these yeah. like my, the, my little brother but, that, but yeah shit. that's what i'm you saying that's I mean? kind of like, a nice we got to that point before that remember in 1980 uh Three, no, 1985, he was like, hey, bro, one more time and I'm going to throw you out. That's my Tony G story <laughs> at World on Wheels because that night, that first night where I right, fucked up. Right, you huffing Yeah, I was, I was like, <laughs> on a the t- kid, like I was on it. And he was, I kept bumping the turntable. Right, right, like, hey, one more time. Yo. He was like, look, man, I'm going to tell you, that's it. I'm going to tell you one more time and then I'm going to throw you out after this. And yeah. I was like, nah. I always tell him that story, and he's like, oh, shit, really? <laughs> like, he knew he was – Sure. Yeah, man, he had to hold his ground, and I respected that, man. It was, well, But I had to know what was up, and I, I learned – Yeah, you had to learn. You got to learn. that etiquette. It was well, like, okay. Well, let me give you – Yes, sir. Because we're going to get to your mixing pretty yeah, soon. Yeah, okay, cool. But let me just we fast forward to yes. after Frost – how did Funk Dubious? How did you get into Funk Dubious? So then, eighty nine. Well, meanwhile, while I'm over here working on K Day, working on doing little stuff, I, I, I met cats like DJ Muggs. I met you know through just you know going to different places. Yeah. He knew who I was as a DJ. He's like, Yo, Ralph, and yeah, oh, it was a pleasure to meet you. This dad, I got records. We want to build, you know, camaraderie. Everything was like so with Muggs. Muggs was such a cool dude. He had such a cool vibe. It's Jason, son Doobie. They were good friends, really good friends. He went to Fairfax 
at, at that time. Mm -hmm. So he saw me on those record covers. He'd be like, yo, that's that dude. I know that dude. He, he goes to my school. That guy's on the M-Walk record. <laughs> yeah. like, that dude that's on the M-Walk cover. I know that. I, I mean, I don't know him, but I know I've seen right. him. And then that's how we knew of each other, but we never met. And then finally we met, and then we, we became friends in 89. Mugs, same thing. I started working. That's when I discovered who Cypress Hill was. They were like on their second song. They had done Funky Feel One, and they had done Feel the Effects of the High. And they were working on... Um, Killer Man. Yeah, they hadn't even done that yet. Like when I worked with them on the four-track stuff, we were, they were rapping the Killer Man, some of the verses. They were rapping into like this Cool in the Gang drum beat. I think it's the uh, Buttermilk. Or one of those breaks, I forget. But, oh, it was just... You know, the, the crazy drum break. That's it was just a drum break. But that was, what's the name did that? Keith and Hank? Right. Keith and Hank did that, right. that album, for, did that stuff for them. Because they went over there right after Ice Cube went over there. They like, uh, they said, Oops. Yeah, because, okay, so then this is still Muggs production that we fucking with, right? right? Okay, we're four track. I'm over there working with Muggs because he's still figuring this stuff out. And I'm like, okay, I'm watching this dude, Muggs. He's really dedicated to this SB 1200, man. I'm seeing how this guy's like, he's just working. And when I saw it, it was just in awe, man. Like, oh, yeah. They got so it's many. Real shit. If you, when you listen to a yeah. Public Enemy album. Yeah. The Ice Cube album, first yes. album, yes. and the first Cypress Hill album. Yes, yes. It is like, Absolutely. it is like, like sample yeah. galore. It's dope. You da, know what's da, 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 da. They got so much noise to your ears. are like, yeah. I'm having an eargasm. Ear candy, so baby. That's production <laughs> noise. Yeah. That's that production eargasm. noise. I'm worried up, you, man. But you know who else used to give yeah. you eargasms? Parliament would give you eargasms. George but, Clinton. But that's oh. what... Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> so you so, 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 so <laughs> give, give us a couple of quick stories with, yes, with, with touring with Funk Dubious. Yeah. Okay. So then, 1991, a song right after the first Cypress Hill album comes out. There's this big following with Cypress, of course. So we're on the West Coast. Son Doobie was still on the East Coast, and we we're, we're trying to get him to come to L.A. We're like, Yo, son, we can try to form a group and and bring you. So basically this is how the, the jump around song kind of came together too, because there was an idea of what was going on. Son was kind of like, he was the guy that was relaying all the information that was, that was happening on the East coast. He's like, yo man, they jumping in the clubs out here, man. Like he's like, yo, they, they in New York, man, they, they jumping when they jumping. So then that's when Muggs was like, yo, I want to do a song. And it's like with the jump element, but I, I'm trying to do it. You know, and that, that was just the, the ideas that he was putting concepting forth. through Con it. Yeah, exactly. Son Doobie was basically like Brooklyn, but most but raised in L.A., just like Muggs. Muggs was a Queens, has a queen, family in Queens, and like Son Doobie's daddies in, in Brooklyn and stuff like that. And So they were bi-coastal cats, but I think the majority of this time was spent on the West Coast. Sure. Like they I, had that. Like Ice-T is, yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. So they were hybrids. You know, they were, they were, yeah, they were yeah. transplants and whatnot. But the cool thing satellites. about that. Satellites. Word up. So, but the cool thing was like, boom, I get to meet these cats. So now I'm like, oh, shit, I got I know this dude is a dope rapper because once I started figuring out, oh, okay, this dude, this, he's going to be my MC. This is going to be one of the dudes that I'm going to work with. And then from, from then, we just started forming. We, we were all Cypress Hill at one point. It was T, it was like, but it was just too many different people. So we had three collectives. House of Pain wasn't in the mix yet. It was just really three of us Sun Doobie, Tomahawk Funk, DJ Ralph M. We're funk, we weren't Funk Dubious yet. We were still kind of like, Learn, we were still part of Cypress Hill because sure. we hadn't gotten a position yet. But we was I was working with Muggs on the thing. B and, and Son would write lyrics. You know, Send Dog would be, you know, so it was a whole camaraderie. Coolio, uh, Dub C and DJ Aladdin. Muggs and DJ Aladdin had a, had a room. Uh, they, they rented a room. They were roommates. They had an apartment that was right there in Hollywood. So that whole thing, man, it was like constant, like, yo, yo, oh, what's up? A lot of working. A lot, a lot of working. And it was still small circles of, of, of us that were still trying to get our shit out. We were pedaling fast, dude. Yeah. From the time I, did, I wanted to be a mix master, I had to start pedaling Right. Fast. Things are coming at you and you got to handle it. Had to be ready, man. Yeah. And, and it was like that intuitiveness, you know, it's that, the, the, the going into the acting, going into, that's what's leading me into that now. It's like all these things that I prepared myself for in my life from music and from DJing and that, to, to this was like it's almost like it was like I was it was nothing to be able to just step from right. from this to that. I mean, you're an entertainer. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's yes, that's it, you know. Yeah. When you when you when you entertain whatever facet it is you you know you're on. Yeah. You gotta you figure it out. You you yeah, pick man. it up and you you move and you and go you, towards it and you go towards it. So then all of a sudden, like five years ago, all of a sudden I just start getting this pull that's like, yo, dude, you should like what what's going on with this? Like, how do what do actors do? Like, I just started. I always 
questioned it, but I always, I was always like, and then being in a hip hop group, there was always being stereotyped and shit. I was in my mind, I was like, people would be like, "Yo, Rob, why don't you trying to, you should try to do, you should be trying to do some movies or something, or being, you should try to do some acting." Yeah. And this was like 20 years ago. They were telling me this, and I was like, I was like, man, they're gonna stereotype me, man. They're gonna give me a Type knife. Cast. They're gonna yeah, give yeah, me, yeah, 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 you know. Yeah. And in Band my mind, I was still very conscious as far as of everything, very self aware, yeah. which I still am. But now I'm at that point where I realized, I said, look. I'm going to be stereotyped regardless. Right. And coming from a hip-hop group, you weren't even really, you were blinded by all that. You know, you were still trying right. to. Right. No, yeah. no, yeah. But, so I said, man, you know what? It's not going to matter. You, you, as long as you know what you don't want to do. Right. What you're not going to yeah. allow yourself to do. Right, like, right. I'm not going to allow. You're the only one in charge of that. Correct. Right? I'm the one that will be like, hey, uh, nope, I'm not doing the, no gay scenes. I'm going to go. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, right. I'm not doing no playing. That's just who I am. And right. that's just what I got to be firm with. Like, you can't cut the hair. I'm not, you might not even catch me doing like, no, like snort, no lines or no, nothing crazy. Sure. You know? Unless it was something that what, was what like. What have you been in? What have you, what, what, what are you. Uh... Honestly, man, I started doing this in 2015 and I've been really getting my, for me, my 10,000 hours in, in, ter in terms of background acting. Okay. Because I really wanted to know what it was all about, man. Sure. It's no joke, dude. Today I worked on this thing. I was working with a Superstore. It's a TV show that's coming. It's been the third season. I've been, man, I started my first. That's uh, NBC. NBC. Yes, hit sir. Yeah, I was yeah. at Universal today. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. NBC over there. So we knocked that out. Did a bunch of little bits and pieces. I'm pushing carts coming out the store. Like, you know, rainy kind of day. Right, right. Real easy stuff, man. But, but, but it has a rhythm to it. There's a rhythm to all these things, and I had to learn that from the musical side to be able to en to, to engage. Yeah. What, now, what, what you you were a, a evil, a bad guy, or yeah, a villain? Yeah, I've been on like an American Crime Story, the OJ one, right. like different bits, just bits and pieces that I yeah, got. Yeah. And I don't know if I made the final cut yet. I have to, there's a lot of Modern Family, Brooklyn Nine Nine. I've done uh, uh, a Lethal Weapon, Training Day, the Rush Hour, all the TV uh, nice. shows that have been coming out in right. the last couple this years. Last two couple seasons, couple of, seasons, you know. all on them. And Modern Family, you can catch me just doing like a Cool Cross, where where like Sofia Vergara and uh, uh, what's his name uh, Ed O'Neill. Ed O'Neill, he was cool Bundy. with me. Bundy, bro, he's a jazzy dude too. He likes jazz, yeah, man. Yeah. But a lot of times when you go there, like you you know, of course you got to be professional. You can't be going out of your way saying too much. But he was cool. He smiled at you because you know they want you to do certain things, but they don't want you to fuck the vibration right. of no but see that's what you like you're saying on. about like you know an easy e back in the day you know like you know look i'm just here to do my gig i'm here to right. do my job i'm not here to star fuck everybody right. and exactly. do your thing, right <laughs> right, right. Yes. so it's like they're mm -hmm. just people too man yeah and right? they feel your vibration man you right know? no they, they pick up on that yeah they're like okay this dude's focused he ain't fucking or, or he's a fucking weirdo or he's you know? a fucking weirdo <laughs> right get him off yeah get him off exactly. the stage Thank doing too much get him off the set we'll see you later yeah 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 you don't have to come back tomorrow right we're just gonna find someone else to do all your shit right and I've seen that happen where it's like, hey, yo, chill out. Don't do that. Like, what are you fucking around with it? Right, People right. go and they start doing shit. Like, hey, dude, sit your ass down right <laughs> yeah. there and just wait for them to give you instructions, man. Right. And be ready. Like, don't fall asleep. People go and I'm like, come on, man. Like, that's the worst thing. It's like, even today, I was up last night till, till 3.30 in the morning. I was up till 3.30 in the morning and, and, and I was like, I had a 6 a.m. call time. Right. Yeah. And I, I was chilling. I was drinking Jack, kicking it. I was late don't yesterday. Seem like somebody who falls asleep pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, once I smoke some bud, well, once I smoke some bud, all this shit's just gonna. I probably won't even say a Wind word. Wind down. Wind down. It's gonna down. be super. I'm gonna be like the WB frog and shit. I ain't gonna be saying shit. I'm gonna be like, you know what I mean? Because that's what Hello, my baby. Hello, my baby. Hello, my baby. So all right, that's yes. cool, Ralph. So you, like I said, you've you've, you've got a you've got a full spectrum here, man. You mean from the early you do, 80s? You do us all over everywhere. Bro, I, mean, I had to, man. I gotta you let like you know. A, no, that's what I'm saying. You've, yeah. you, 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 yeah. you, you, you've seen a lot. You've seen a lot. You've had a lot of influences come and go, and and I'm, you know it's cool, man. I, I, Thank I'm, you, man. I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm glad to say that you came by the show to talk to us. I'm man. just happy I came to tell somebody, man. I got yeah. all kinds he's of been, stories. He's been So hey, so you gonna get on the tables? Yes. Of course. All right. Oh, we're going yeah. to see why yes. he, that, that the 13 year old, the, Mexican. Mexican. the Mexican. 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 We're going to see why the Mexican went from 12 years old saying, get away from this damn turntable. <laughs> to get him on. To get him on the tables. Hey, gonna, you're going to get on. I'll be a mix master. Gonna and we're going to find a little bit of that out right now. All right. But before you go, Word. if you want people to find you yes. or anything you want to do, because you guys don't know, me and Ralph, as soon as we get everything, the dust settles. I'm gonna get him somewhere. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put this big 
party together. And Word. I think I already know we might do one before the summer's over. But we're gonna get something together. Wow. We're gonna make this thing. I've already been working on it it's behind your back. Oh yeah, that's what's <laughs> so where, up. So where can yes. people find you, Ralph? Where, where, your Instagram? You got a Twitter yeah, account? Got, oh yeah, Instagram at Funk Dubious Music. That's okay. the collective there. You know we. we at Funk Dubious Music. Okay. On Instagram, uh, Facebook, DJ Ralph M. It's D double E space J A Y space Ralph space M. DJ Ralph M. At your service. That's what I'm working with right now. I, you know what? I want to upload a lot of stuff on my YouTube channels and, and all that stuff. I've been for years. You know, you go, you do it, you lose the channel, something happens. I got like all kind of shit floating around. I just right. can't get to it now, right? You forget so, passwords. Yeah, you forget and the password. And, and it's like, so I'm like, okay, you know what? Leave that. I, but I've never, like, honestly, you won't still. This is probably the most. Like, you know, of course, doing interviews and talking about stuff. Like, I, But if, if you really notice, like, I haven't really given any production secrets. Or, like, you know what I'm saying? Stuff of how I do things sure. or even DJing. That's because you won't catch a lot of that stuff online, at least not yet. Because, yeah, you got to catch it live. Right, you catch yeah. it live or you don't catch you're it all, to, right? You're, you're, you're going to catch some live. Right, you're going to catch some live. My man, AJ's in the house cooking for, for what? That's right. like super cool, man. Thank you, man. Okay, well, thank and, um, you, Ralph. Man. And we got more stories, so there's a part two to this, all right? <laughs> oh, yeah. This okay. was just well, the, this is just the three intro. And four. I think, I think just, three yeah. and four. Yeah, we got to. We got to, dude. <laughs> no, nah, hell no. Nah. All right, all right. Uh, yes, sir. We're going to have to bring him, to, like, Try weekly, like right. uh, yeah. We we'll see you in three like, weeks. We, we, everybody get their books open and <laughs> okay, we'll start we're, chapter two. <laughs> chapter two. I you. The Ralph right. Gibb, the It'll Ralph Gibb story. Right. There's so much more. I promise you. Ralph, right. thank, thank you, man. man. Thank, thank you, man. Thank, thank you. you. I'm glad I had to get that off, man. No, you, like, yeah, you got you, you got <laughs> you got a lot out there. Yeah. You put a lot out, man. A lot and of not info. bad for a guy that's been up since, like I said, three thirty, four, uh, six right. in the morning. Did how many hours did I do today? We did twelve hours on set. And in, in the hot sun, in and now doing exterior shots. And we you came by and wrapped it all up at the Loud Which Lab show. My brothers, man. And word up. When, when loud little, Labs show. Lo, loud Labs. I'm going to get some loud dabs word. up in this All, man, all one word. <laughs> word up. One big word, yeah. all capped. One what's up, big man. word. I want to say peace to my little brother, Steve. Geyser in the building. Peace. <laughs> all all right. right. Let's do this. Test, 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 test. test, test, test. Oh, yeah. You ready to rock the house? Lumia's favorite part. Woo! All right, ladies. Thank you, man. Woo! Thank you. You want to get the music out there? Hear ye, hear ye. As you can see, all the time I have my man AJ to the right of me. Once and again. And once again, we're about to get some food in our stomach. AJ, what do you have for Ralph M. and the rest of the Loud Lab crew? Uh, I didn't take this back to JV, you know, and all the people who are dancers, all the groovers, all the prep gangsters. Everything that we had to go through to get here, you know what I'm saying? That's why it's yeah. such a blessing to be here with my man. But Woo. the reason, we got some flatbread tonight. Years, I got garlic naan bread and assorted flavors. We got a pepperoni and mushroom. I've got a, a, a chive and parsley with goat cheese. I've got, you know, just straight pepperoni. And I've also got a, uh, a uh, margarita pizza right now. In fact, we're going to pull everything out. Let's go. Okay, we're going to pull everything out. You see? Ooh, I see Let's cheese go. dripping. Let's go to it. Yes, yes. I saw that too. Oh, yeah. That's why I'm like. Mm. Did you need me to bring you one of these right now? Okay. Oh, cheese is nothing. Just Look at that. that. Fresh mozzarella. And here we go with our other one. That's looking real tasty. Homestyle, baby. This is how you work with what you got. Ralph, this is all you. Look, man. That's all we know how to do, right? Work, work, work that exactly. magic every time. It's the kitchen, the kitchen is cooking, and it smells oh, real yeah. good this time. What's cooking in the kitchen? What's cooking in the kitchen? You know, Chef AJ is cooking in the kitchen. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so as Chef AJ has mixed his things and his ingredients, now we're gonna see what's cooking in the kitchen. With my man, man, Ralph M. Oh, and for y'all, yeah. because it's good. Ralph, you see you on top of the kitchen, right? Oh, yeah. You see you on top of the kitchen. Let, let, hot. Let, me, let me turn the kitchen off so, you know. Good looking now, man. Stick up out of here. Uh, absolutely. Do you smell? This is vinyl. This is vinyl. What we all do around here, around this time. You. And you can turn it up some, too. I got you all the way. I, I'll turn up on the mixer, but I don't know. Okay. Take you back. So we're talking West Coast type, West Coast, East Coast, you know. What do you 
call that the uh, collaborations going back to 87, 86 with Bronx style Bob, there's Ice T and Melly Mel. Here we go. We just got a little bit of music here, and we're gonna get a little bit of history at the same time as he's playing these songs. Jam's live broadcast. I lost my fucking head in 1984, man. Word up. This was a classic record. There's original pressing, too. All around. Hey. <laughs> this song right here, when I first heard this, I almost lost my damn mind. <laughs> Buffalo Girls? I heard yeah, Buffalo Girls. <laughs> but the thing was, it, but the thing. See, a lot of people don't know that Malcolm McLaren brought the world with the world famous record group. I mean, he put them all, he put them all together. He was, he was a genius. Word, man. He was doing some cool shit back then for that, man. Oh. Man, this is oh. great right there. Man. Yeah, buddy. 
starting records just want to play just to warm up a little bit make sure these tables are stable so we'll really get into it here we go each of us doing some cool shit though here goes This cut right here had brothers dancing too, man. R9. Ooh, yeah, man. Oh, I know you're about to kill it now. It's all over. I oh, I want to make sure this ain't skipping on me. Yeah, bit. get it. Those are my, these are my babies right here, so this they, your they, choice, they right? will take care of you. Get your weight right. Get the weight right. They yeah, will take right? care of you. Turntables, but but right now Nick V had to let me remember what you did. Oh, 
Here we go. I love that part though. Some skip. Oh. So, 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 Is there a fader in here in the middle? What's, what's the difference between the two uh, labels? The oh, two, uh, one's yeah. purple. I think, the, uh, I think for this one, this is the original one I remember. This is probably the one that came, I think that's a promo. That might be the promo. And I think this is the original, like when they came out commercially. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I remember seeing that when I was a little kid. It was on the 45 also. Oh, Brian. On tour, he was on tour with like Jermaine Jackson and shit like that. And uh, O'Brien was a badass uh, keyboardist, man, virtuoso keyboardist, man, super duper dude, man. But you know, he was out there. That was Don Cornelius's man and, shit and stuff. Don Cornelius. Don Cornelius. <laughs> Here we go. Instrumental was killer too. Yeah, yeah. baby. These were the records right here that really got me excited about DJing it because those were some of the first records that I saw people dancing to and really having a good time to and, and cats, you know, blending and mixing the records correctly, man. So it was fun to see people, their reaction to all the stuff. It was, bam. So that's why I play this stuff. I still play this from the heart because it means that much to me, you know what I'm saying? So do what you love, man, and do it to the fullest. Try this. One, two, three. Hell yeah, it's gonna go. You're hearing something new. <laughs> Coming up. Something new. Something about to happen right now. Nasty rock. Ugh. Damn. <laughs> we, you know, you guys. You don't eat right now. Are you guys breaking bread? Make a little bread. No <laughs> Let's eat. Yeah. But listen, we got a lot. Let me give you the clear and I'm going home. Okay, clear. Okay, we're going to do the clear because we need the clear. We need the clear on the tape before we leave. Loud, loud, loud. And we're going to be out of here. But once you hear this clear, and he's gonna do it back like 1984, 85 style. And then we're out of here. And I will give my farewell speech. Uh oh. It's fast, man. What year is this clear? When did this clear come out? This is the DJ. Also. This is the DJ's favorite tool right here, right? Yes, sir. 83 was the business, man. They were making records for DJs right then and there, man. They had the dope sounds on the top. Like if you had a record that like that, that one, two, three, four, I'm about to get into it. That was the shit. That was like. Oh no. Yeah, man. What about it? 
Make sure everything's tested. Yeah, the, the, You got that? I didn't bring it, because I always, yeah, you know. When I was in school, this is what we learned right here, my boy. So he played, he gave me gas. Oh, man, this, this, this reminded me of Skateland so much right here. This is Skateland. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this one's low. <laughs> Let me go back to the top. Yeah. Tough, man. Here we go. Oh, yeah, I know what to do. Moment. <laughs> this is the moment. This is the moment singing about the It's almost like playing tennis. Let's get this ball in real quick one more time. One, two, three, four. Here we go. Are right, you ready? Let's go. Baby, <laughs> I just had to jump out. That's what you gotta do, man. I'm going for mine, man. Word up. I had a good time, man. All Thank right. you so much for inviting me, man. I got to touch, touch the turntables a little bit. I'm coming back, though, man. I'm coming back. More stories. I'm gonna be better prepared on the turntables because this was just we did this on the fly. Word up, man. Man, thank you so much, y'all, man. Ralph Fam signing off. Am I signing off now? Yeah, loud yeah, Love? Yeah, the yeah. Loud Lab Show. Word up. Broadcasting live from LA. My man. Everybody in the house. AJ. Thank y'all so much, man. You guys Thank made you, my motherfucking day, man. Thank you, man. Your Peace to y'all. Yes, sir. And I'm about to eat some pizza. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. Well, you see, this is what we waited for. We got that. Any other DJ, if you can't do that, oh, please. don't come on over here. But check this out. Please, DJs that are out there that you're a DJ, come on out and come have some fun. You see Ralph M. He's an OG. You new, you new G's. Come on out and come to see what you can do. Because we really want y'all to come and celebrate with us. But this is the Loud Lab Show, and this is how it goes down. AJ, thank you for the pizza. Thank you. Always cooking in the lab. Always cooking in the lab, cooking in the lab. We got Todd one over there. Todd, how was the pizza? Fucking delicious. <laughs> we can't say that because um, Action Bronson has that term already, fucking delicious. Oh, you gotta fuck <laughs> we got <laughs> Yeah, my homie Todd said it's fucking delicious. It's fucking delicious. You got action, Lou, man. Hey, I, I want to give it up to Ralph M, though, man. This was a big inspiration for me. I was, like, probably in elementary when I first funked Dubious, and I'll never forget going to the Music Plus on Vine right across from McDonald's and purchasing that tape. I was like, Pops, you got to give me this shit. Got me, dude. Hey, and, Pops. hey man. Hey, man. Hey, dude. Man. My man, right here, always, a, and, and like he said, it's not until you see it live. Until you see it live, take notes, yeah. go back and practice and do that shit, man. Because you're the reason. Thank you. Practice, practice, practice. Yes. Send me the link. 
Okay, but you, but you know what time it is right now. I have to always do my dedication to Don Cornelius. You know this. Come on, you know. Let's get a dedication to Don Cornelius. So what do we say? What do we say? We're, We're going to say the okay. show is about to end, but you know how it goes down. Peace, Peace and love, love and soul. soul.